Up dog, Aura Rig fella. I got my size. I'm waiting. I can't wait. And you got something that it comes in that looks I pretty National League and silky. Clean, clean little box here, Obes. You like a clean Aura little box, Rig. don't you? you I like sure a clean do. Little box. A tight little <laughs> organic. I mean, look at the display. That it looks is, National League style. It's there. perfection. Yeah. It's perfection. Uh, get your t t uh, wearable technology at its finest form for monitoring your sleep, improving your sleep, understanding your body, transforming your health into places, Obi, that it has never been. I can't wait. I've been telling you for a couple weeks now. Your rings are in the mail. You too, Jimmy. By the way, I think they had to really up the sizes when Obi told me that his ring size was a 13. They 13 like, obes. They were yeah. like, that's as big as we do it. Yeah. Finally, finally, <laughs> it was we, on my pinky finger. Finally, we got a guy that can handle a big old ring. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, boys, I'm really excited for you guys to uh, wake up and see your performance levels, understand your sleep, uh, optimize your daily lives. Uh, I'm actually just spitting this because it's just something that I always do, but it gives you readiness in the morning. It's so nice when you wake up and you're like, man, you know what? Big day tomorrow. I know if I sleep well tonight and tomorrow that I'm going to be optimized for that meeting or for that family function or for your kid's soccer game or whatever the case may be. It's always good to monitor your health. And uh, you can always tell when you're getting sick too. Your HRR goes through the roof. It's uh, heart rate variability. And basically, um, it's a good way to tone down things when things get moving too fast and your body's not ready for it. I'm looking forward to seeing the mental and physical recovery that this is going to provide for me on days like, you know, Friday, for example, when I play golf and drink too much out there and see how, what it says Saturday morning opposed to a Wednesday, Thursday morning when I got my good, healthy weekend and, and really notice the difference. And just I, I'm looking forward to the mental and physical recovery from it upy. Uh, because I, that's what it's all about, in my opinion. Yeah, boys, I'm really looking forward to seeing how the sleep and recovery helps with uh, my productivity. Because I just like to see there's nights when I'm chasing my little guy around in the middle of the night, got to get up and uh, feed the, the newborn I have. And I just curious to see what type of uh, day I'm going to have the next day when it comes to this aura ring. The aura ring up dog comes in two styles and four colors silver, black, stealth, matte black, and the new limited edition. Heritage Gold Aura Ring. So for $299 to $399, you can give or get the gift of health by visiting AuraRing.com, fellas. AuraRing.com, proud sponsor of the podcast Missing Curfew. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a fresh new episode of Missing Curfew. I'm Shane O'Brien coming to you from Hall Pass Media, Newport Beach. We got our first Missing Curfew playoff edition. Uh, me and Updog are going to talk a little spring classic. Obviously, playoff hockey's back. The game one between Tampa and Florida. Flurry, 15 straight years in the playoff. Kucherov and Stamkos coming back doing some fucking and much, much more of playoff hockey. Let me introduce my boy, the Updog. Shane O'Brien, what a weekend we had. An absolute treat to play alongside of you at the Big Canyon Spring Classic. Uh, our member, member guests, what a fucking tourney, bro. Wow. we uh, It was a great weekend. Our course was in phenomenal shape. So credit to those boys. The new, the new superintendent there has been killing it. But our boy uh, Beecher on the bag, Jason Beach, who uh, kicked our ass two weeks ago. Uh, he shot a little 65. Like <laughs> <laughs> Nine birdies <laughs> for our caddy. But... Um, what a treat. We actually, you know, we stepped up. We had five matches. Five, five total matches, whole matches. Against uh, some really quality, quality players. I mean, they threw us in the A flight. I know. I thought right which, where we deserved to which be. Which exactly too. turned out better for us, I think, because I got a few more strokes, right? And then you got, I mean, you didn't even need your strokes. You made so many key birdies for us. The second match against our boy, Pickup and Moody, you made four birdies in nine holes, and that was fucking turning the lights out on those boys. Well, one eagle, though, right? You, or no, you, the Eagle was the next game. You made the statement um, on Saturday morning in our first match. We started on number two, which is like a, well, for Uppy, it's a par four, but it's a reachable par five. You hit a good drive, and you hit a fucking bomb little cut drive that you had like 140 yards in or something. That yeah, was tasty. Yeah. Um, and speaking of tasty, I, I love the fact that our morning rounds were, you know, we get to the first couple holes, and then you're just looking at me. You're like, I need a fucking drink. 
<laughs> let's start drinking. I'm like, all right, let's go, baby. And we just, we worked it. We, we had did. a full missing curfew, absolute uh, team chemistry uh, that led into a, you know, that led to us winning our flight and then jumping into a, to a 10 team derby, which uh, was highlighted by my, my daughter, Izzy and yeah. Christina and her mom showing up uh, and us just, you know, parading. We had the Grayson tarps on shout out to Grayson hooking us up with some nice tarps and uh, man, we almost did it. We were right there. I put you in the bunker we, we twice. I put you in the bunker twice. It could have cost us. You made some hell of a bunker shot, and I knew you'd do it. Um, I mean, the, I got, I got him out of the bunker for you. It's not like I – I mean, I gave you like 12, 13 footers both times. But for the, our listeners that don't know what a derby is, so every flight, there was 10 flights. Each winner of each flight gets in a derby. And then everybody from the club is there. There's music playing, people watching, and then you eliminate teams every every hole. So the first two holes, then you eliminate a team. The next hole, you eliminate a team. So we made it to the 18th hole. We were giving up shots to everyone, but it was just a cool event to see all the members around there drinking and um, up dog. It was a great weekend for us. Team building, you know. Team anytime building. You, anytime you get in those derbies, it's a good weekend. Good to get the blood flow going. The, to, another thing, by the way, we have matured. People that don't think we matured because we were in the derby and we were too sober. Remember? Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. second hole, you're like, I'm like, I'm too sober. Like, sorry, I'm like, let's go do a shot or something. So at least we paced ourselves up. So. That's, so. Uh, that's damn right. So, you know, we, we use that. We use that momentum. Good character builder. Although we didn't host the trophy, man. We, we uh, you know, we got in the depths. We felt the blood again. Got that adrenaline going. Just like fucking playoff hockey, yeah. which we're going to talk about today. Uh, we had fans cheering us on, which a lot of these teams right drunk now has fans, got some fans, drunk some fans. drunk fans, just like we saw in Carolina. And uh, that's exciting for everyone, uh, especially here at Missing Curfew for us. And uh, we're going to touch on that. Yeah. So thank you to Big Canyon. I'll be your great partner. We fucking, we want our flight, but we, we'll get them next year, I guess. Um, and you mentioned it, I'll be playoff hockey's back. Uh, it's been a great year. Well, not maybe not the word's great, but for the NHL, they got through a COVID year with no fans and blah, blah, blah. And now playoff hockey is back. And for me, I just feel normal watching it again. Obviously, we're going to get into Tampa and Carolina. But what are your initial th thoughts on the playoff hockey, just people back in the building and feeling normal again? I love it. Uh, sat and watched the game, the Vegas Golden Knights game the other day with Todd Pickup, who's a majority a minority owner. And uh, we highlighted just the fact that, you know, you look around and you get the excitement. These guys... You know, whether it's P.A. Peronto staring in the glass, looking at his <laughs> hair or up dog, you know, throwing numbers over the glass with on his puck to get uh, something working after the game. Whatever the case may be, there's fans in the building for playoff hockey. Uh, the Stanley Cup is four rounds away from being given out. And it's exciting time for, for fans. It's exciting time for players. We're going to touch on, you know, Canada and, you know, the players still having to play in front of no fans, which is which is upsetting. After seeing Carolina last night against the Nashville Predators, you know, on this, you know, on this comeback, scoring goals, tying the game, Jordan Stahl playing like he's, you know, he 22 again. Um, and just whether they had 12,000 fans or they packed it to 16,000, which would look like it, I don't care. It was great and uh, great for hockey just to see these fans jump up and down and, and cheer. And the, those Carolina fans, by the way, they got some good looking, uh, they got some tasty looking cheerleaders. They, they always had great cheerleaders. And great cheerleaders. I used, just, to, used to walk by them to go out on for warm up. Yeah. You could just kind of smell like they, you know, <laughs> just smell good. Some, some, some barns like the Joe Lewis smelt like popcorn and hot dogs. Not Carolina when you walk by those cheerleaders. No, it smelled like nice perfume. But the one thing, Carolina's always been a great barn to play in. It's, it's a great fan base. For me, just I was a little concerned with like these guys have played each other over and over all year, right? And I was like, well, I wonder if it's gonna get the playoffs. You're gonna be like, well, we've already played these guys eight times. And it's kind of been the opposite. The the anger that they've had throughout the course of the season has carried over. And there's nothing better than playoff hockey up and to have these fans back in the building for these guys. I don't know, man. I've just been at home watching them and it's made me feel good. Uh, there's no better time of year. And for the sacrifice that these players have made, they deserve it so much. So let's keep getting more fans and fans in the building. And, and playoff hockey, man, it's it's so exciting up dog. Obes, what's the loudest barn that you played in when you think about playoff time hockey? You think about, you know, not only the anthem. I think everyone will know which barn that is. But mm -hmm. fans, atmosphere, buildings, acoustics, What's what's tops it off for you? Yeah, so for me, it's it was... Well, the first year 
we played St. Louis in the first round. That barn was fucking buzzing when I was in Vancouver. Van, yeah. No, but St. Louis. Yeah. That rink was loud. Obviously, the Madhouse on Madison was extremely loud. The anthem and everything. And then uh, Staples. Ooh, yeah, Staples, Vancouver, and, Vancouver yeah. and LA, we played my second year, and Staples was way louder than Vancouver. The fans were great there. You know, Staples just has good energy in regular season games. So those three barns, and then Vancouver was was pretty good itself with the white towels, but those three barns are the ones that jump out for me. So I think back, for me, fans, the sound of the fans is San Jose. 100, oh, yeah. Uh, I know. Like 100%. The Shark Tank, the fans, It's it, it was crazy. And it wasn't just our... Uh, I felt that actually my first year when I was in Nashville, I played my first playoff game, you know, I was 21 or 22. We lost in five that year, but the fans were crazy. Um, moving forward, Philadelphia versus Washington, 2008. Uh, we made game seven, Lupul, the Lupul Heroics. What a in, celebration, in, in overtime. That acoustics in there, we could feel the bass under our ass sitting on the bench. I'm talking shaking. And like looking, you know, you just get that feeling. You're like, boys, it's time. Fucking game seven. Let's go. And you're feeling like this bass underneath you just pump and pump and pump. And it's like through your bones. Yeah. That was that. Now, next round, playing Montreal in the Montreal Forum. Bell Center. Bell Center. We call it the fucking new forum. Yeah, Whatever. Fuck. It's, fuck. It rocks. Uh, it was rocking. And that's just like the cathedral. So that's like your holy... That's like your holy grail of playoff hockey. Just, you know, French diehard fans expecting Montreal to kick the shit out of us. And we did the exact opposite and kicked the shit out of them. So that uh, it had never been so quiet in there after we beat them. But that was a that was a hell of experience for fans in the in You know, in I remember game. that playoff series. You guys bitch slapped them around. What about Dallas? Was Dallas good to play? I'm too in the playoffs? busy looking at the cheerleaders. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> t- I just remember you guys played them the second in the second round the one year, right in St. Louis. Uh, we played them in the second round. Yeah, I remember we watching those seven. games and thought it was pretty like loud in there. Um, but yeah, and but it's it's tough because they don't they just don't know hockey as good as like what well, yeah. San Jose fans are crazy. Well, that barn in general, it just in the regular season, it feels yeah. like it's on top of you. So come playoff time, I can only imagine. Like there were some nights in there when San Jose was winning presidents trophies and stuff, and Jumbo and Boiler and Patty Marlowe and the list cheat shoe goes on and on, and they get you going. That I mean, it's unstoppable. It was unstoppable yeah. back in the day. Yeah, it's so. good time hockey. Um, up dog, there one thing I did notice, and listen, I, I get it. It's because of COVID. We're trying to get, make more revenue back for the owners and the players and all this, but. One of the best things, because Princey put up a sick picture of you in Florida, and when I think back of playoff hockey, I remember this, like, when you come out for that first warm-up of game one, and they had Stanley Cup playoffs in blue, written just inside both blue lines, and you come out, and the barn's already full, and you're like, all right, this is fucking playoff hockey. I know it sounds kind of stupid that it's only pain on the ice, but... I watch these games, I'm like, something's different, and obviously they're doing the sponsorships... um, what kind of style are they doing? Hologram. It's like Holog- a hologram like a hologram style. style yeah. Because I get they're trying to make money. But when you saw that picture of Princey, I was with you on the golf course, of you, sorry, you were like, what a sick fucking pick. Remember coming out with that Stanley Cup playoffs sure on the did, ice? Like, it's just the feeling you got was. Yeah, I think almost every team, like, as soon as you, as soon as the regular season's over and you're going to the playoffs, they scrape the ice and they start putting the logo down right away. Yeah. And that kind of starts it. And now that there's social media and stuff, the team starts putting it out there like, it's time, right? Dot, 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 playoff hockey. And then boom, it's a picture of your new ice surface with like 2019 Stanley, Stanley Cup, Cup playoffs. playoffs. And then when you get out there on that sheet for the first practice, yeah, you know, it's usually the day before the, the match. You're kind of, fuck boys, we played all year to get right here. It's time, you know, and, and to your, you know, it's funny that you noticed that because that was a sick photo of, of me, no bucket, just fucking coming Yeah, up. well, you showed it to me on the golf course. You're like, look oh, at this yeah, sick yeah. picture Princey put up. And yeah. then I was watching the games, the first couple games, and I'm like, something's different. Yeah. What's, I don't know. And then I'm like, oh, fuck, they don't have a Stanley Cup playoffs written on the ice. And like, for me as a player, like, I remember, like you just said, like, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it, that, and then you come in the first day after the regular season or the first practice and all your under stuff has Stanley cup playoffs yeah, on it. Your you bucket has gear. Stanley cup playoffs on it. You're like, here we go. Yeah. We just got through 82 games up of fucking ups and downs and peaks and valleys and missing curfews and being totally. late for buses and fuck. But here we go. This is time. And you just feel like, wow, that young kid from Fort McMurray and Port Hope. When I saw that stuff, I'm like this, I'm playing for the Stanley cup. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Like this is for the Stanley cup. It's exciting. And then, and the feeling as it goes on, Obes, and you've been there. I mean, you've, you've 
second round three times. Totally, I mean, right? But you know, every time you get past that one round, bro, half the teams get eliminated, half are still alive, and you're, you know, you're that much closer to the to the ultimate goal of of winning a cup as a kid, and and it, and it starts like one game at a fucking time. As cliche as it is, it started a couple days ago, and we're seeing some great hockey. We're seeing some intense hockey, uh, like you said. Not sure how this was going to go with these teams playing each other so much this year, but man, what we saw in a couple of these rounds and some hits yeah. and some suspensions, we're, it's uh, it's on. We're going to get right into that now. And just another thing about talking about playoff hockey, the best and worst feeling, the best feeling is when you shake the hands of the guys you just beat out, right? Especially guys that you had played with you. Like if I would have beat you out or you would have beat me out, we would have gave each other a hug and you know, I'd see you in a couple of weeks or whatever. And then when you lose... You know, you're just like, fuck, it's you're over. Booze. You're li- you're <laughs> you win booze. or lose, you hit the booze. But playoff hockey, man, it's it's back and it's feeling good. So, Uppy, you called this series the Sunshine Fuck Fest. And, wow, what a great name because it's been doing some fucking early. Um, it was the best game that I have watched in the Stanley Cup, in the NHL, sorry, since maybe the finals of the St. Louis Blues and Boston Bruins. Maybe that game seven was better than it or that series, but it's the, it was the best hockey game. The game one of Tampa and Florida was the yep. best hockey game I've watched since 2019. Yeah, different lead changes. It was just hitting. hitting it fighting. was scrums. There were scrums. Fighting. Fighting. There were scrums after every fucking whistle. Yeah. And I loved every second of it. Totally. And granted to the, and to the ref, it was an old school veteran ref's name, and maybe we can look it up, but can you look it up who ref that sure game? Can. He did a great job of... Of calling the game the right way, of letting things go. Uppy, there were some borderline hits in that whole game. That in the regular season are penalties. But that is what playoff hockey was all about. The 9,000 fans in Florida were unbelievable. And just give me your thoughts on that game one as a as a former Lightning and a Panther, more of a Lightning than a Panther. But for you, what were your thoughts seeing that barn rocking again? And just, I mean, what an excellent hockey game. You know what? It's it's two teams that for me are as good as any and have played each other a lot. They know each other. The last game of the season, which is a great game to, uh, to kind of, you know, determine how this playoff series is going to go. Were fights, line brawls, like goals. I mean, look at Huberdor. I, I, Hubie, 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 Hubie. Fuck. It was incredible. So, uh, I got the ref's name. We is got it Dan, Dan O'Rourke? O'Rourke. Yeah. Beauty. I you just had it. it written down. I'm like, I think Dan, it's Dan O'Rourke. It's Dan O'Rourke and Kyle Raymond. Yeah. Dan O'Rourke uh, was a guy. There was a run ref that I was like, this guy's a veteran. He knows what he's doing. Totally. All you had to do was just look at him like, Danny, you know what the fuck's going on? You know, he yeah. knows. And he called so many just uh, coincidental. So it's a lot, yeah. of, a lot of four on four. Fuck, that's so exciting. It's exciting. It yeah. keeps the game fast. I thought he did a great job. Um, you know, nothing slows the game down more than than just two minute minors for nothing. I know. You know, like a, whatever. You want to, both guys are fucking around, throwing both in the box. Yeah. Or just come and say, boys. Keep her going. You want to drop the mitts? Tonight's, tonight's the night. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather see them not call anything and just let it continue 5-on-5. Five five. But he was trying to, obviously, the game doesn't get completely out of hand. So he was trying. But he didn't give out any 10s, which I love because there's nothing worse than the playoffs. Me and you are scrumming it up. And the next thing you know, we get two 10s. And we're sitting there. Our legs go. We're like out of the game because we were just playing emotionally. Totally. Emotionally. Yeah, yeah. yeah, with emotion. With emotion. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I was watching the game at the Wild Goose, which is a great bar here in Newport. Yeah. And uh, Christina showed great up her, with, her, with a couple of her friends. And I'm just totally into this game. I'm talking, like, it's rocking. I got on all the TVs in there. And, uh, you know, it's like middle of the third period. And I'm like, fucking A. I didn't bet Florida, but I wanted to. I took Tampa. Yeah. Well, I know you and Loops were going back and forth. Loops yeah. thinks Tampa is the best, the best team in the league. <laughs> and, he, I, and I mean, <laughs> They Whoa. might be right now. When Point and Kucherov play like that. And Stammer. We'll get into that. Yeah. It's it's It could be turn the lights out, but Florida is not going anywhere. Yes, Sam Bennett hit is is tough, and we got to dive into that because it was it was a big, impactful play, and it will be in the series should things not go their way this game. Mm-hmm. Um, but the way the lead changes happen, the way that they, the energy in front of the net, the way that they uh, the puck battles um, – Strong play, our boy, your boy Weeks, like Weegsy stepping baby. up. I'm watching him go behind their net and like open, fucking do the old 1080, fucking. <laughs> Montour was great too. Monty had yeah. so many fucking so, chances. So just a good, like a good quality game back and forth. The Florida Panthers aren't going anywhere. They're they're meaning business, and uh, I think the road to the Stanley Cup right now for the Tampa Bay Lightning is going to be a hard one. Um, 
And it starts, you know, it starts in this series. It's a, it's back and forth, man. It's going to be good. It is going to be hard. And we're going to talk Central Division with our boy Broadway here in a little bit. But, you know, you watched Carolina Nashville last night. And Nashville, hey, you got Brad fucking Richardson, a Stanley Cup champion. You don't dress him for game one. Get him in there for game two, for fuck's sakes. He's good in the faceoff circle. He competes. He's a playoff guy. If Richie's not in there for game two for Nashville, it's a joke. But you're right. It could be. For them to get out of the central, like Florida's going to be a tough series. Let's talk about the Sam Bennett hit up. You, you got it on your iPad there. I'll go first before I get your thoughts on it, just because I talked about it yesterday. When I initially saw the hit, I it's a penalty, yes. Yep. I even would have been okay with giving them five in a game in game one because it's an emotional game. It is what it is. Set the tone that that's not allowed. Five in a game. Tampa probably would <laughs> The way their power play was clicking in game one, you know, they could have got two goals on, a, on the on the five minute power play the game would have been over but whatever they gave him two it is what it is but then they suspend him for game two now florida has worked extremely hard to get to where they are sam bennett a guy who you said at the deadline was a great pickup and he's gone down there and done unbelievable stuff for me to suspend him game two if, if florida loses this game up their season is it's over i mean they're going back to tampa down 0-2 i think they should have given five in a game and let them play game two what were your thoughts on the hit? When I first saw it, I thought he was up against the boards. Up, he was kind of a foot away, so it's it's a little dangerous. Playoff time, everything gets amplified. Uh, little plays, turnovers. There was some turnovers in the Washington game yesterday. There was turnovers in the Vegas game that caused he caused the goal, and we'll talk about those hitting and you know penalties. Also get magnified. I said amplified. I meant magnified. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that is. Probably both actually. <laughs> I'm not a thesaurus or anything, but anyway, um, this this hit, I, and I was a I was a good hitter for the way my body size or whatever, but I could time you, it's, it's yeah. timing and it's like delivery. Mm -hmm. Some guys could be fucking you know six three and as big as you know just rip, but they have no idea how to actually hit. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, no timing. So no timing. So timing wise, when I look at this hit, Sam Bennett obviously takes a hit from McDonough earlier in the game. Could have been suspension. He's coming off his bench. He's going in. He's back checking. He's a low centerman. He gets to his face off dot. He's not slowing down. He's going to bury this Col He's burying Coleman. Yeah. He's made up his mind. Coleman stops, throws the puck behind the net. There is, you know, when I think of a hockey play and that play happens, he throws the puck behind the net. He turns the other way. You're supposed to actually in practice when you work with coaches and you do these drills, you, you're told to fucking throw the puck and go. You're not supposed to throw the puck and stay, right? Like you're talking about turn back up? Like after yeah, you, put, you yeah, turn back like up the wall. The net. You yeah. throw it behind yeah. and you try to beat your D out of the wall. And yeah. that's the way you, you get to the middle. That's how you play hockey now. Yeah. That's it. You watch any sort of after, uh, after practice drill with the forwards. Uh, Coleman, right? Yeah. He would get fucking reamed out by the coach. Move your feet. Pass it and move. Well, Sam Bennett was hoping he was passing and moving instead of passing and just watching his pass go because his timing was going to hit him as he turned. He doesn't turn. He's fucking a foot and a half away from the wall. He buries his face into the wall from behind. You're not allowed to hit a guy in the numbers, yeah. so it's so illegal. Uh, but I know where he was. I know what his mission was, and it wasn't to hit the guy from behind, although he just said, fuck it, I'm going in. <laughs> well, like you said before when we were talking before we came on here, like... And it's same as a defenseman too. When you commit to hit a guy, like I'm going to go hit you, like headshots. I talked about this with Cooley and Steger. Like, if a forward's coming around the net, I'm a D-man. I go to hit this guy. I've already like committed to it, and he loses his head a little bit, and I hit him in the head. Fuck, it's a tough bounce. But like what you're saying, he committed to the hit, hoping that, anticipating that Blake was going to go up, Coleman was going to go up the wall, and didn't. And then you just catch him, yeah. and it's fucking that's. And then that was the way the game was played the whole day, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a fine line in the playoffs. It's like. It's like Kadri a couple of years, you know, it's, oh, it's yeah. Kadri in Boston, just kind of just going above what he needed to do. Like you, you didn't have to cross check the guy in the face. You could have punched him and it might've <laughs> changed the way exactly. your career went, the way the playoff round went, you know, for your Maple Leafs, for the city itself, just because you crossed the line just in a split second. And that's, you know, Sam Bennett's lucky. He only got one game. If, if Coleman's hurt, it's different. It, it, it really is. If he's, if he's out, it's, it's maybe two. And two, like you guys yeah. talked about on your show, two games in the playoffs is ten games in the regular season. Yeah. No, Uppy, you're, you're you're right. If he if he's hurt, it's a lot more. And it's just it's that one game that everyone's like, oh yeah, you're just digging him one. 
Well, fuck. One's one's important. Huge. Like yeah. if they lose tonight, it's 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 over. And turnovers, Uppy. You bring up turnovers. Listen, the Stanley Cup playoff hockey has been fast, exciting, physical, but the amount of turnovers that happen in a game, and when a team goes up two goals and the chances they give up right away because of turnovers, like it's just I I know the game has changed. But back in our day, like if a team got up two, you're like, you were locking that down. Like make the safe play. I don't know guys turn now and they skate away from pucks and it's just, I guess it is what it is. But there has been a lot of turnovers in the first few nights. Um, did you see the Hornquist hit on Braden Point in that game one at Tampa? So Braden Point was on the half wall. And I think he cycled it down and had another guy on him. And Horny came down the wall and fucking oh, the drilled old fucking him. fucking tutu. Yes, the old Good. fucking tutu. It drilled him. And like it was a big hit and it was a cunty hit. Yeah. It was cunty. But there was tons of shit out there that was borderline, which I loved. And I feel bad for Bennett because this kid's been unbelievable. For him, I hope Florida gets it done. But if they lose two to Tampa, it's in one uppy. They need uh, some goaltending. Yeah, they're going they, with... They just, you know... Uh, uh, you can let that tying goal happen, but then you got to, like, make a save. I know it's Braden Point on a breakaway, you know, and fuck, he's probably going to score that 80% of the time. What maybe. a dish by Hedman. Yeah, it was a sick dish. But, like, that's when you step up in your own building game one. Like, keep the game alive. Get to overtime against these, you know. Get, yeah. Just get that game to overtime. Your team battled it out, Bobrovsky, and that's probably why he's uh, slated to not start the next game. They're going with Dreger tonight. This is Tuesday. Obviously, we record on yeah. Tuesday. They're going with Dreger, which... I don't know. I like going back to the veteran, but I, I think if you go to Bobrovsky tonight and they lose game two, then you go to Dreger. But what I mean, Coach Q knows more. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, but that was sometimes my you're down two. It's too late. Could be too late. So you want your team to, you know, the, the team needs a spark. They're losing Bennett. They need a they need a spark. Maybe it's the, maybe it's the goalie. And and I'm sure Joel Quinville knows how the team within the dressing room rallies around this this young kid. And I'm sure uh, I'm sure they'll step up tonight and have a big match down there in Sunrise, Florida. Can't wait to watch it. Um, you talk about OT games. We got to ask Scoopsy here when we talk Parlay Cafe with him. All first three games of the playoffs went to overtime, first time in the history of NHL playoffs. And fuck every game because that Tampa Florida game should have went to overtime, like you said. So maybe we should be. I'm gonna ask Broadway too about the puck line taking the goals. Um, up dog face offs. I've been watching these games, buddy. And just how important they are come playoff time. And we talk about guys like Nate Thompson still in the league. And, <laughs> you know, Dominic Moore played forever. And there's some other face-off guys. Kyle I'm Brozniak. Freaking. Brozniak. There's, like, Ryan O'Reilly, we're going to get into the West Division too. It got ugly there for the Blues in the second half. But he kept it closer because of the face-offs. His dominant. That's just so important this time of year to start with the puck. It is. It is. I was watching the Golden Knights game. And, and it was one thing that the Golden Knights just couldn't start with the puck. And they're a team that is a puck possession team. And, you know, they're playing Minnesota, who plays tight, who, you know, who plays a super tight game and uh, has been getting great goaltending. And if you can't, if you can't be a team that plays and, you know, an aggressive in your style, like fa losing draws is a momentum killer. Yeah. You know, you have such a good shift and then you t pin these guys down, you lose a draw and then blah, 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 blah. It's fucking. You and know. you're just chasing the game. You feel like you're chasing. Like, you th as a forward, if you lose a faceoff, you could go a 30-second shift where you're literally just skating around chase chasing the puck the entire yeah. shift. You go the one, two, two. <laughs> you get back it, to the bench, you're like, fuck. Yeah, yeah especially as a winger. Right? It's like fucking boring sometimes. <laughs> um, but it's not only the centerman. You talk about Nate Thompson being a good centerman and these guys being able to snap it back. It's it's everyone. It's, it's your wingers. It's, you know, it's setting up the right way knowing what's going to happen having a plan you know and then and then all just kind of it's it's a battle a lot of those pucks that just kind of end up in the centerman's feet it's 50 50 in most cases and if you're a winger it's it's your duty to help your centerman out uh get in there and start fucking absolutely it is wingers and your d you gotta help you gotta box guys out i've just noticed these games i've been watching and Mainly the the teams I've had money on. If they're not winning faceoffs, I'm like, would someone get in there and bend their fucking knees and win a draw or something? Like, so moving forward, these guys that are snapping them back, it's going to be important. Um, up dog, you brought up Kucherov and Stammer. We had talked about Cooch. Listen, he was out the entire year, and we had Stammer on the pod after they won the mug. And Stammer said, and this is why I thought Kucherov could come back and not be rusty. He said he does. He's not really in the gym lifting weights. He's always working on his craft. I had Brian Engblom on, who does play-by-play -play for the Lightning. Kucherov in his garage in Tampa has the plastic ice in his garage with a net. 
And he's just toe dragging everything. He's just going short titty after fucking drinking two balls of red wine at his fucking sick pad in Tampa. And what Stamber said is all he does is work on his craft. So just talk about were you shocked about him coming back, the way Stamber played, and their power play uppy. I mean, say what you want about Florida. They got to stay out of the box. Yeah. Um, before we get into all that, just the way you just described it, and I'm having these flashbacks, but some of the best times, well, some of the best hockey I've ever played was when I was younger, mm -hmm. when I was in junior, <laughs> yeah. you know, because I wasn't into the booze as much. You were? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. No, but <laughs> yeah, right. I, in, my, in Selena and Louie Redenbach's place, my billets and cantaloupes, I had a net. Redenbach. And I had a fucking shooting tutor there. Mm -hmm. I had pucks everywhere. And I would just go and hammer pucks, whether it was after dinner, it was in the fucking afternoon. And it just became so natural of when the puck's on your stick and you're 10 feet away, you're five feet away, it is instinct on just where the goalie will be and where the puck's going to go and angles. I think of a guy like Kucherov. I think of a guy like Panarin. I, I've seen their Instagram videos. It's like natural to these guys. Young kids out there, get the fucking net in your basement, fucking put pucks in the walls, yeah. you know, get your dad, get your parents pissed off at you because you're just wrecking shit. It works. And I, I think Kucherov is a prime example of a guy that, that, you know, doesn't do too much in the gym, but is, put himself in the right place and uh, after reading articles on on kind of his therapy coming back has he been healthy for a while now is there a cap thing going on are they hiding fucking money because <laughs> because these guys They're are fucking, fucking healthy somewhere. i mean they got a hundred million dollar fucking cap hit right now going into the playoffs That's which not, is pretty intense yeah i mean long term i are 17 million bucks this year the tampa bay lightning i think there's some a couple red flags going off someone throw the flag there's something going on there gourd i just say get rid this, of salary i wanted general. to highlight this also that i read is the, is this gourd who's probably you know he's a big a big pickup last year for tampa yeah and good peak care he spent numerous time you, you think about like covid and and not being able to practice with your team how hard is it for kucherov to come back and be that good in game one a lot of people had wrote him off. I read an article too, the hockey writer saying he's not going to be, he's not going to do anything when he comes back. It's going to yeah. take him good call five boys. five games. Well, yeah, good call. Good once he once writers. he fucking licked his chops, he started blowing bubbles with the bubble gum like Pavel Bure used to <laughs> when I used to play him. It was it was turn the lights out. So Gord spends numerous time with him after practice, being a PK guy and coming down the wall, putting pressure on him, putting putting him in tough spots, putting him in the spots he hasn't been in, and you know, in twelve months since last year's playoffs, things like that help out guys for and, sure. And whether you know the coach wants him to do it or Gord just knows, hey, this is going to make Kucherov the best you know player possible, you know, at my expense of staying out extra in practice. I just think it's I think it's a good thing, and and people should learn from that type of stuff. Absolutely, and and for me, when the game first started. I thought five on five, he looked a little bit, I thought he looked a little bit rusty, to be honest with you. And then he had a breakaway pass that he fumbled fucked that I was like, all right, here he's, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's going to be rusty. And then they take, Florida takes a couple penalties and he fucking throws a back, uh, cross the box sauce to Stammer the hammer and Stammer misses, which he'll never miss that again the rest of the playoffs. They work it back around, Stammer up to Hedman, over to Kucherov and he does that little slide shot, top shot, um, Short side top titty, and I'm like, look out. And then you could just see them up. you like, those skilled guys. Yeah. Like, you were a skilled guy in junior and in the NHL to start your career. Like, when you get your touches and get going, like, yeah. I remember starting playoff games being like, boys, let's try. And <laughs> I was one to talk because I was always taking the fucking penalties, but stay out of the box. Don't let Kane and Sharp and Taves get their touches, kind of thing. Cause when they do, it rolls right into their fucking five on five play. And I think that's what happened once Kucherov got his feels and touches, he was back. So it, it it was it was unbelievable to watch for me. I mean, I knew he was going to be good, but I didn't think he'd have that big of an impact right away. So, up dog, we're gonna before we bring our boy Hazy and we're gonna jump into the West Division and the North Division. Um, let's start in the West. Let's start with Vegas and Mini. Um, Flurry plays unbelievable in Game One. We tried to check who's starting in Game Two. It's still not confirmed. Um, you know, what are your thoughts? Mini had their number throughout the regular season and. Vegas, in my opinion, came out of the gates hot, and then Mini took over, had better scoring chances. Are you concerned about Vegas, their lack of scoring? What about in net? What are you thinking? Yeah, I think they need to keep it more the simple works in the playoffs. Shooting the puck, not being fucking fancy. Um, let's just touch on Flurry though, first off. Yeah. Uh, first overall pick in 2003. I remember that draft, actually. It was in Nashville. 
yeah. me and Toots got flown in there to be part of like the Nashville kind of ambassador, like hang out with the fans, and we got super pinned. And <laughs> we're, we're at the roof I believe it. with all like the staff, and it was just like they're like, guys, we need you here, like not in the bars. We need you to. <laughs> anyway, Flurry gets drafted first overall. We're at the cooler there. on tin roof. <laughs> First overall in 2003, and what he's done in his career, three cups, 15 years straight in Stanley Cup playoff play. Crazy. is insane. That so is broke a record crazy. for goaltending. Congrats to, to Flower on that. But he made unbelievable saves. I'm talking cross crease glove being in the right spot. He he had been doing that since junior, and it's still part of his M.O. His, like, flashy, keep the puck out of his net no matter what. Um Tampa, uh, Tampa, Vegas needs to feed off that. They need to find a way to score goals. And for me, it's a power play thing. I don't like the way their power play is set up. I don't like William Carlson on his on his off wing. He doesn't shoot the puck like Vladimir Tarasenko. Uh, Stone can feed anyone from the offside wing, and I think all the plays kind of come through that right side. But you have a guy like Marsha Schott. He should be on his he should be on his one timer. Um, and he should be shooting pucks. Every time there's a chance to shoot a puck, shoot it. Get guys in front of the net. You got Tuck. Tuck's an incredible big player. Get him in front of the net. Tuck Fox. Tuck Fox. Yeah, he got to get him going. He's a sick player. I know. So, And then he wants to play. He's a gamer. He's a guy that wants to be out on the ice. Coaches need to see that. Uh, when you can't score goals, you need to shuffle, throw the boys in the blender and the Vitamix and get them fucking buzzing. <laughs> but it starts with, it starts with your power play. Mm -hmm. Petro, you're there. If you're on the power play, you're Theodore. You guys are both. You can walk the line, get the pucks through. Break someone's hand with a slapper. Break their foot. Fuck it. Shoot the puck. I agree. And that's a great point on you on their PP setup. I've never noticed that. I'm going to keep an eye on that now. Um, you're not the only guy that said that. I think for Stieg, he said something about the same thing with their PP setup. So good observation, Updog. For me, the save Flurry made on, I call him KK97, Kirill Kaprizov. That save where he pushed from here over and made that save was unbelievable. Now, listen, they won the Jennings Award with Fleury and Leonard. And at the start of the year, they had so much money wrapped up in between the pipes. Leonard got hurt. It looked like... A th but now it's like, you know, we'll see what happens. They have to go back to Leonard. I'm just old school that if you got a guy, you ride him unless things go bad. I don't know how they don't go back to Fleury tonight. Um, we'll see what happens in the pipes. And for Petro, listen, this guy's a world-class defenseman, but he has to be better. Right, he didn't have a great regular season. We'll give him benefit of the doubt. COVID, going to a new team. Injury, he's, yep. Fuck, he's got four kids, doesn't he, or something? Yeah. But now, buddy, this is your time. Fuck, it cost him game one. That soft play out, that's on your forehand as a defenseman. You're fucking out of the zone. So he's got to be better. And Mini, man, listen, they're believing. I had Jared Spurgeon on the power play with Cooley. They got a good thing going there. I mean, Felino, Greenway, these guys are old school big guys. So I, I think Vegas wins tonight, Uppy, but. We got plans to go to Vegas, so come on, boys. Hey, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. DraftKings. Come on. Going to come Vegas. on. We're going to Vegas, baby. So we and need Vegas we to win. We want to win some money. Um, the other uh, the playoff matchup, up dog. My old Colorado Avalanche versus your old St. Louis Blues. Game one last night. Give me your thoughts. <laughs> you go first, because this game. Scary. Fuck me, where they going? But yeah, that's, we're, that's, we're, that's all. Maybe talk about say. Bennington. I, talk about Bennington's performance, and just talk about him because he was unbelievable. Forty oh, over. I mean, they had over fifty shots. I believe he had forty-eight, 47 or saves? something like that. Yeah, good on him. And some of the saves in like, late in the game to keep it close. Um, I love the intensity, but man, I guess when I look at that series right now, I see, I see the McKinnon. Landis Cog, Ratten in line, being a line that you need to just allow them to score one or two goals a night. If they get three or four, you're done. Yeah. Just keep them to one goal. Now, your rest of your lineup, the the Bozaks, the Sammy Blaze, Thomas, Barbershev, Thomas, Sammy or Sanford. These guys that have all been part of that playoff run and that Stanley Cup final, they need to be positive players every night. They need yeah. to they need to beat their other guys that they play against on the score sheet. And they need to play hard. They need to be intimidating. And those guys can be the difference in this in this series. It's not going to be for me, it's not the O'Reilly factor, it's not the Shen, it's not uh, Schwartzy. Those guys need to play 
the top dogs hard and just keep them to one or two goals. And then these other guys got to be the ones that kind of lead the charge. This is more than ever a time for them to showcase the fact that they got a deep lineup and that they can have some guys outplay the, you know, the other team. Yeah. If that doesn't happen, man, is it going to be a fast and quick series, unfortunately. And Binner, I don't care how good Binner plays. He can't save those. Uh, what was going on last night? Shift after shift after shift. He played good, but it's you can't you know you can't rely on your goalie fifty saves a night. He was unbelievable. I thought when they made it one one heading into the at the end of the second, I went, oh here we go. I had the Avs right minus whatever three forty something ridiculous, and I just thought Bennington's going to steal this one. I thought O'Reilly was going to go out and score in the third, and it was going to be a greasy Blues fucking playoff win like they've done a million times. It didn't work out that way. I will say this from the Blues perspective, Shen. And basically their whole team, they're being physical. They got to continue to be physical. Yeah, Hopefully yeah, that, that's that, the only that, way they know how to yeah, play. That, that, that will pay off over the course of a seven-game series. From the Avs perspective, what Landis Cog did, man, to get a Gordie Howe hat trick, Shen goes out there and fucking runs uh, Rantanen, which I have no problem with. Oh. Let's fucking play off hockey. Do it all. I would do the same thing. Then he goes and fights Landis Cog. Good on both of those guys. Good on Landy. When that top line for the Avs gets on the ice, the pace of play changes. <laughs> like it's like when McDavid gets on the ice. It just it it goes from the National League to whatever the fuck you want to call it. And like you said, you got to slow them down. And my biggest concern for the Blues is the Avs forecheck. These forwards they have to somehow uppy. I know it's not the days of you know when we played where you could pick for me and I could go back and get the biscuit, but they have to stop this forecheck or slow it down because the Avs they just continue to come and get them in the spin cycle. And the Blues D is big and, and veteran presence, but. They're not the the fastest guys back there, so they need some help. I think if they can t contain the forecheck of the Avs, it may help them. But, I mean, McKinnon, that empty netter, I thought he was going to put the fucking thing right through the net. Like, he was like a skills, like flying down. And and it just, was a hard snapper. It was it probably was, 95 mile an hour snap. Like, I was like, wow. So, it's only one game, but it was, it was, it was interesting to watch. And uh, we're lucky to be out here in the West to really enjoy it. And then... Um, the North Division up, he hasn't started yet because of COVID reasons and they're to finish off a couple of games. The poor Canucks and Flames, boys. Hang in there. You're almost done. Um, How drunk are you guys up there playing those games? I want to know that. Well, fuck, they can't even go out for dinner, can they? Or well, they're getting drunk at home? Uh, or yeah, what? they're getting drunk at home. <laughs> yeah, they're getting drunk at home. Aren't they? I mean, I they've already be. planned their trips. Are I they allowed be. to leave the goddamn country? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. know. So but they're already there out. I, I can't see one guy saying, I'm sticking around Vancouver. When this is over, I or I'm sticking around Calgary. No, and Vancouver's are, getting nice this time of year. They are <laughs> out. I used to have a good time right now. They're loading up the bird and going right to Cabo. As they should. They deserve it. But first of all, if you're up there, if you're Matthews and these guys, Marner or McDavid, and you're watching the Sunshine State Fuck Fest, and you're like, I got to play game one with no fans. I know there's nothing we can do about it, Uppy, but I'm going to complain about it again. I don't care. I feel sorry for these guys that they're yeah. going to be playing game one in empty buildings, and they're going to play two rounds with no fans. Yeah. It just sucks. Canada, sort out your shit. And then when whoever wins the North, they're going to come down here and they're going to at least be able to play one round with some fans. And I know these people from Canada, I'm telling you, my buddies, my Leaf buddies, my guys I grew up with, if the Leafs win the North and head to Buffalo, they're crossing that border and oh, they're yeah. going to the game. They don't give a fuck. Refugees, they're yeah, coming. Yeah, don't worry. They're coming. Don't worry about quarantine when they get back. They'll <laughs> walk right back over. So, Oppie, what do you think the Leafs and Habs, Jack Campbell start in game one, Carey Price, Played a conditioning stint half the game. He looks like he will start game one. Um, real quick, my perspective. Anderson and Gallagher, I love this Anderson. This guy fucks. He said, we embrace the underdog role. We love it. We wanted to play these guys. This is who we want. Anderson said, I can't wait to be physical and grind people down and play a series against this skilled team. Do the Habs have a chance? What are your feel on this division, on this matchup? I think he touches a good point. Uh, they need to be complete pricks against... The Marners, the Matthews, the everyone and anyone. Uh, Morgan Riley, you after every whistle, it is a little shot in the wrist. Yeah, it's a little shot in the back of the leg. It's a face wash. It's a wrestling match. It's I fucked your girlfriend. It's a, <laughs> it's everything. You need to get under these guys. <laughs> That, no, that was Whether a zinger. That was a zinger though when he wouldn't say that to somebody. Hey, buddy, I fucked your girlfriend. Like especially playoff time. Oh, yeah. Like, Oh, yeah, you don't know who I am? I'm nobody? <laughs> Ask your girlfriend who I am. <laughs> uh, listen, it's it's time that this is exciting. Yeah. 1979. I just tons, wish there was fucking tons, fans in the building. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. God. 
Just put some holograms of the fans something, in there. Something. Do something. I don't know. They're not going to do it. But anyways, it's just... Yeah, it hasn't been since 1970. 79. Yeah. So an exciting time for, for TV. We need yeah. to watch it on TV. We will be watching you know, it, but... That is nothing like live hockey, though. It's just like... It, it's, it could it's be got to be zinging. Whoever's listening to this up north, they're just oh, like... God, I mean, God. if you're a Leafs and Habs fan and you're getting this matchup and you can't go to the games, it's just... Um, who are you taking? Are you, are you taking the Leafs or Habs? Who are you picking? I think we already did this last week, but are you still sticking with... I, I got the Leafs, you got the right? Leafs. I believe it's, you took the I, Leafs. I think we both did. The Leafs. I'm taking the Leafs, but I will say this up, dog. If this guy right here, Carey Price, if he comes he in there... Carey. And, and he... The boys. I'm telling you. And I will say this about the Leafs. You will see Freddie Anderson in this series. 100%. Jack Campbell, I love you. you, you the boys, you can tell the boys love you, but you will see Freddie Anderson. So... I can't wait for it to start. And the other division, uh, the other matchup up dog is the Oilers against the Pe uh, Winnipeg Jets. Listen, the Jets didn't make a move at the deadline. They brought in Ben, who's a good veteran defenseman. I'm not taking anything away from him. But they didn't make a move. They stumbled down the stretch. We obviously know what McDavid and Dreisaitl did. What do you, when you look at this series, what are your thoughts? For me, it's if I'm Winnipeg, it's the depth of our team, up the middle, back end, the goaltending. McDavid's going to do his thing, but let's just try to be a deeper more complete hockey club. Yeah, hail the Halibuck. Yeah. They need this guy to play out of his mind. Mm -hmm. um, and when you, when you know, opposite to that, they need to get under Edmonton's goal tenor. Yeah, Smitty. They need to get in his face. Smitty has a hot temper. Yeah. God I remember him. one time I came in on Calgary and I came in and like whacked his glove after the whistle. Fuck you up, Sean. <laughs> I went, whoa, 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 chill out, bro. You're at my, uh, fuck, you had a party at my house and literally like, do you, yeah, I can't really say exactly what he did. But I'm like, and they got it on camera, bro. And I like. <laughs> yeah, so I could, I could whack your hand. I could whack Smitty. you in the hand. It yeah. fucking cost me a fine. They almost evicted me out of my own house. There um, goes my security deposit, Smitty. Fuck. Yeah. Right? So. You know, what Winnipeg has to do is they need their centermen to play strong both ends of the ice, win face-offs, and like the Blues, they just got to keep these guys contained. They're yeah. not going to be able to control them. They just need to contain them. They can't let them go off every night for three or four points. Then it's it's turn out the lights, and it's, it's over in five max. Yeah. But if they play hard and they have, you know, you know contributions from all down their lineup which needs to happen i don't know if they have the depth to do it um you get in a shootout match against these guys it's over boys it is and, and i agree with you with smitty listen i love smitty what he's done i think he should be a business vesna finalist and i always laugh when i watch the other finnish kid because he took your number at training camp 19 how do i say his name costin uh, costin and he's been horrendous down the stretch so as good as Smitty's been, if they can get to Smitty and who wears nineteen, I don't, uh, a goaltender. <laughs> I don't know, but when you text me that from training camp, you're like, "Oh, I can't wear nineteen. Some finished rookie goalie's got my number." I was like, "That's <laughs> a fucking terrible bounce." Um, get to Smitty, get in his face, like you said. Yeah. He's, he's wiry. That Seriously, that could be their thing. He can snap. I'm going Oilers in six. Yeah, that's fair. I got him in five. Yeah. Okay. So uh, next, we will bring in our boy. We will open up the Parlay Cafe. And bringing our boy Broadway Jimmy Scoops to talk East Division. We'll talk a little bit more Central. Top Titty, who we're betting. Broadway Jimmy Scoops joining the boys. Up dog, Scoopsy. Good life, man. Broadway, the weather's getting nice over there on the East Coast. What's what what's rocking your good life closet nowadays, fella? Boys, I just went ham on a good life order, and I couldn't be more happy with the shorts that they just sent me. These shorts that they have at Good Life come in all types of colors, and they got you know they got the spring colors, but more importantly, they got the summer colors, and they have the best joggers on the market. Boys, I'm on the website daily, and this men's sale selection. I'm talking not even the new stuff coming out. The old stuff, too, that they have is just so crispy and clear. There's this one denim snapback shirt, boys. It was 175 bucks. It's on for 85 bucks right now. I got it in a medium. Mm. It's it fucking that away. nice and snug. I know I've been losing a couple LBs lately. Been a lot of golfing, a lot of eating some sushi. And uh, so, boys, get the deals on there. Our promo code is Wadobes. Curfew 20 up dog. Curfew 20. Jump on the men's sale. Jump on and get the new 
the new line, the babes. Get like yourself I said, some Henleys. If you're get a, yourself some Henleys for the summer. Come if, on, boy. Especially if you're single out there. Get yourself some Henleys, fellas. Just be careful because the girls steal them. I always worried about that. Like, where did my favorite shirt go again? Where did my good life shirt go? And then you're like, ah, that girl, she stole it. They've been taking it. Like, I think like the sweatshirts the girls love too, right? Like they love to wear them. And those good life sweatshirts are so comfy. I wore one out the other night, the black with, I uh, had these like maroon shorts on and uh, a couple of the girls I bumped into, they, they comp- complimented my good life. Did you go free sweatshirt. balling? Free balling in the shorts? <laughs> I didn't go free balling in the shorts. No, I had, ah. I had different, I didn't have good life shorts on, but I had the good life. I was at your house, black uh, sweatshirt on. A couple of our friends said, "Hey, you look good in that." So you didn't go, John. Your Hamm. girl said that to me. Ah. I didn't go, John Ham. John Ham just let the let the no, Bucky I fly. I didn't. I didn't. So promo code curfew twenty goodlifeclothing dot com. Check out proud, their new lids too, Uppy. They got some cool new lids, hats out there, flat brim. Check them out. Proud sponsor of the Missing Curfew podcast. Thank you, Good Life Clothing. Welcome back to Missing Curfew, boys, listeners. The Parlay Cafe is open for business, up dog. Our boy coming to us from the East Coast, Broadway, Jimmy Scoops Hayes. Get your scoops. Scoops hey, boys. Hey, business is booming in the Parlay Cafe, and we will break it down a little bit later on here. But, boys, it's great to see you guys. You guys um, look like you guys had a good time in your golf tournament. I saw up dog, unfortunately, look like you missed a putt for the win there, bud. Well, I did put it out on our Instagram, like my girl did, especially. She said, for the tie. And then, like, the next photo was Isabel just bawling her eyes out, (laughs) which is funny. But it wasn't really for the tie. We needed to drain the, like, 50-foot eagle putt, Obse. We were put in a tough spot. And uh, my my comebacker, which was, like, you know, six, seven feet. I should have made it. Fuck, just just for shit. It was over anyways. But it was over. You would have won us a little more cash, but it was over. We were done. I had to make the fucking 40-footer for Eagle. But we won our flight, Broadway. Um, The weather's turning there on the East Coast. I saw you out there. You did a great little commercial for DraftKings, which was hilarious. Um, (laughs) The weather's turning. Let's talk about this East Division, Broadway. We'll start with your Boston Bruins and Washington Capitals. Give us a little breakdown on what's going on out there. Boys, that Boston, Washington, uh, the, did you just hear that? Boston, the Boston, Washington. <laughs> the Boston, <laughs> the Boston Washington uh, series. The biggest concern I got right now in this series is why are the refs every single scrum calling four on four penalties like it's it's almost annoying it should be five on five hockey it's the playoffs these guys obviously hate each other they've been playing each other all season but i'm just getting a little annoyed with all these foolish four on four matching penalties especially jimmy especially guys like us because we get fucking put right on the pine at least five on five we get the chance to go out there and and mix it well that was the thing about the four on four a lot of guys were missing their ice time but how easy we just talked about earlier um I I'm, I liked I didn't I guess not not like the four and four I just liked that it wasn't he was making it even Steven in the Tampa Panthers game so I see what you're saying with the four and four though because it, it fucks up the flow and guys like us we miss our opportunities and miss our shifts yeah I, exactly and, and and when they do the match and penalties because I know my boy Brad Marchand he's in every single one of these scrums but I need Marcy to to cool it down here because I know other than me watching because I'm selfishly I just want to watch him play all night but I can just picture Don Sweeney and Cam Neely up in that press box losing their mind when he's taking those extra penalties I think it's still it's still so early to I think it's Marchance it's his MO man he gets like this rat fucking I'm gonna, yeah I, I love it I'm gonna bury a couple on you I'm gonna be this idiot and then as the series goes on whether the, you know they're up or down, he manages to really like evolve and play within the whistles, play within his strengths, and just you know walk that fine line. But what what we saw in, the, in you know in game one and two is the rat, and it's I love it. I mean, you bring up Marshawn. So before we get your thoughts on the game one, Hazy, there was a clip of him game two with him and Mantha, and he's putting his stick in Mantha's fucking face, <laughs> yeah. and the fucking ref calls it four on four. Like that's and I love Marshawn, but in my opinion. That's when you say, hey, dumb dumb, you're getting the only one here. Yeah. I mean, it just he sucked Mantha. And Mantha didn't even do anything. But like you said, up dog, that's his that's his ability to fucking be a rat and he loves it. But Broadway, game one went to the caps. What was your thoughts on that game? They've both been close, obviously, but what were your thoughts on game one? 
Uh, game one, it was uh, as a Bruins guy, I was hammering the Bruins in that game. And you know what? The big dogs didn't really show up for that game. So that's when I was kind of like sitting there being like, oh, shit, are the Bruins in one here? But I was talking to Dale Arnold yesterday. He does uh, Nesson. I was at a golf tournament with them. And we both agreed that when you hold the big dogs like Pasenak, Marshan, Hall, and Krejci all off the score sheet, that's not going to happen often. And then they bounce right back in game two. And that's the Bruins team I think we're going to see moving forward. When those guys are going, they I think all four of them or five of them had uh, multi-point games. And that's just going to play big time in the Bruins' favor. What did you think about, and, and you mentioned that, the second line for the Bruins in that game one, they were minus two. I mean, I think that second line is maybe more important than the first line Broadway. Like, to, for them to get, they got back on track in game two, which we'll talk about. But that second line of Hall, Krejci, and Smith, could it be more important than the perfection line? That that line is going to be their motor this whole playoff because you're going to get your points from the, the top line there. And if those guys can produce like they did last night, that's going to be the key for the Bruins to continue to win and be able to move on in the series. Because Taylor Hall, he was he was unbelievable last night. That uh, tying goal was that was all individual effort by him. He went flying down the wall, comes and then goes right to the hard airs in net and bangs home a rebound, ties the game, and then the Bruins take care of it in overtime. He really shoved it, didn't he? Scoopsy, shoved it right I had I had his I had the outline of his face on my milk carton. It was sketched. <laughs> it was he sketched. Coming. He was dashed two in game one. He played, he played better in game two, but he still hadn't got on the score sheet. They were about to lose the game, and he scores with three minutes left, and I had to get the eraser out and take him off my milk carton because the Bruins. Let me ask you about game two. You want to say something? I quick? do. So I was going to yeah. say game one while we're on it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Did you guys see the shift that fucking old Krejci had there? No, was it bad? When he got ran by Ovechkin? Oh, well, fuck. He gets he comes up the wall on the half wall and gets just manhandled by Dylan. <laughs> Dylan just manhandles him, throws him on the ice, grabs the puck, goes down on a two-on-one. And Dylan, of course, Dylan, you're a D-man. You can't really stick-handle the puck. It look, I'm sure it looks like it's square to you. Shoot the fucking puck. He's trying to dish one back door. And then, so, of course, it comes on to Krejci's stick in the corner, and here comes Alexander the Great, and he <laughs> ran him as hard as I've seen a guy get hit in a long, long time. He barreled over Krejci. Like, two times in 16 seconds, he got just work. I was like, God, that's play it's playoff hockey. What, what, do you think, what do you think Ovi's weighing right now? What do you think he's playing at? 245? More. More? 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 It could be yeah. more. It could be more. more. Who do we got on the inside that we can hit? Like I don't know, but he that basically. I, I, might, be, hit I by, might be able to find this out for us. Yeah, let's see if we could get the the a picture of like the weigh in shit. Because yeah. they're still doing the weigh ins. It's yeah. right next to probably the COVID testing. Because getting hit by him right now would fucking oh. not feel great. Probably, yeah. Um what did you think on game one? Obviously, Anderson comes in. I know you want to touch on Kelly Rudy's comments, but Hazy, what do you think about Anderson coming in, the old veteran and kicking in game one? When I saw Anderson coming in, I had the biggest smile on my face though, because I was, like I said earlier, I was hammering the Bruins, and I was like, there's no way this Josh Anderson, this veteran, is going to be able to steal a game, and he <laughs> he shut me up real quick. You know, I think that's going to be another question mark for Washington moving forward. Is is Anderson going to be able to handle this load? Like, I, I don't know if he's capable of doing it. Up, dog, you want to talk about Kelly Rudy chirping the – Started goalie about not. Shut up, Kelly. Hey, Kelly, your button yeah. popped off your fucking suit yeah. this year. You shouldn't be. Fucking <laughs> lose a couple. That was nuts. Hey, I was like, stick to the like fucking chicken wings and popcorn <laughs> up in the fucking press box. You can't. Are you nuts? Is he he played the game. Yeah. He, is he nuts? You pull a groin. You're you got to stretch you said you're more. not a pro. <laughs> I actually, it's great because Kelly, uh, because fucking our boy, um, well, Juice. Kevin yeah. Biaxa? is on the screen with him. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's the quadruple screen. So I'm looking Four at boxes. Yeah, and and at the time I'm looking at fucking Juice's face, and I know he's like in his head going, "Is he really saying this shit? How do you say that to a professional goalie in Game One of the Stanley Cup Finals that you're not ready to play because you're not stretching enough? Did what? Did you watch him stretch before the game? It was you're, an outrageous comment. You're you're a fucking half decent goalie at best. <laughs> he it had nothing to do with stretching either. That was just like a full on hyper extension. It was it was almost crazy. I thought he did his Kelly knee. Rudy. I did a little research. Save percentage is eight ninety three in his career. That's 3. not going to get you a three point four three goals against. 
<laughs> he's a five games above 500 in his career, and he's there chirping. I, the, the only thing I think about, Kel, first of all, I used to see Kelly when I was in Calgary, and he's, he doesn't mind the cold one, which not, I don't mind. Kelly. There's nothing wrong with that. But I just remember when I think up. of Kelly Rudy, I think of Don Sherry in Rock'em Sock'em when he had the blue Chevron. Oh, yeah. He's like, look at Kelly, the blue Chevron hanging out of a bucket. <laughs> it ties in real nice with the LA colors. <laughs> 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 but Kelly, come on, man. This guy pulled his groin. You can't chirp him about not being a pro ops. Oh, so. I don't know what he has against the guy, or I don't know. Maybe he knows something we don't. Maybe the guy's just an absolute booze hound or something. So then Kelly Broadway game two. Your Bruins are in trouble, and then Taylor Hall. Let me ask you about Taylor Hall, first of all. I mean, you guys know I have a hard-on for him, but before the playoffs started, they were like, is Taylor Hall going to get an extension to Boston? You know, Because he did play well since the trade deadline. But until he scored that goal, Hazy, what was your overall impressions in his game, his playoff game the first two nights, before he scored in the late in the third? I, see, like, the Taylor Hall, like, I, I'm, I'm a fan of Taylor Hall just because – He's just adding so much depth to that team. And I think the first the first game, I just think the Bruins just weren't that good. I, I think all the guys, you can't just put on Taylor Hall. But I think Taylor Hall adds a whole new dynamic to the Boston Bruins. And it's the biggest thing. Like, uh, it's the depth that he adds. He makes – now they have a legitimate top six. And it takes the pressure off for guys like Charlie Coyle and Jake DeBrusque. And those two guys had unbelievable games in game two. Like, Coyle's a guy – that I told you at the beginning of the playoffs. Well, you might not, he might go a little bit unseen during the regular season, but he's there in the playoffs. He's a big body. He goes to the net hard. He had unbelievable patience. And then DeBrusque, DeBrusque is playing unbelievable right now. He's got two goals in two games. I think he's starting to get the – I mean, going back to regular season, I think it's like four or five points in his last five games. So those that's the biggest uh, deciding factor that I think the Bruins are going to have the edge on is that their depth is so much deeper than the, the Capitals. Well, if Knutsov will ever come off protocol, uh, COVID protocol, this guy's... What is on going COVID. on there? I don't know. Is he just fucking doing dust in the fucking locker room or what? <laughs> <laughs> this fucking guy, they could use him back. Um, what did you think about the Tom Wilson hit in game two where he came from... I mean, I love Tom Wilson's game, but that... He came from basically the far corner. Came from the White House. Yeah, he came, <laughs> he came from Pennsylvania Ave <laughs> in the old bumper's old office. They came across and fucking... I don't know. Who'd he hit? Who was it? Uh, it doesn't matter. What do you think of that hit, Hazy? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm usually the guy that's going against you guys with Tom Wilson, but I think Tom <laughs> Wilson has been a beast, and he, he, you know, he's playing the game hard. And I don't, I think you guys, are you guys following uh, Sean Avery on Instagram because he gives unbelievable breakdowns of of certain plays during games. And I think he had something the other day. He didn't have the Tom Wilson one, but it was breaking down clean, dirty hits. If that makes any sense. And I think Tom Wilson's playing within the rules and he's just playing hard it's playoff hockey and i think he's going to be another guy that if he can keep playing the way hit they're going to keep um washington in the series so it's safe to say this 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 has got seven games kind of feel doesn't it broadway this one's uh, i think this one's going the distance fella yeah i'd i'd be shocked if this one does not go the distance and then, like you said we might have to start betting the draws because i think this boston uh, washington series is going to have a lot of overtime all right, Islanders pit. What'd you think? Obviously, the Islanders go in there and still game one. You got somebody that you want to throw in your milk carton from this series, which I fucking love. Uh, the Islanders pit series, that was uh, a surprise to me, but Lou Lamorello is looking like a genius again with uh, Kyle Palmieri edition. He's gone. There was somebody I read on Twitter the other day. There was a story about how that uh, Pajot, he got traded at the deadline last year, didn't really do much, and then he shined in the playoffs, and Palmieri with the two goals. In that first game, overtime winner. But the guy that I want to throw on the milk carton, if this could be a long series for Tristan Jari if he cannot figure out that glove hand. So his glove hand is on the milk carton right now, boys. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's he's in there to be to do what you know. Pitt Pittsburgh's always had good goaltending, and it's up to him. You cannot let you know you got the fucking big boys, Crosby and Carter, and these boys relying on you to keep them in games, and what those. Those three goals he let in last round, you know, whether it's the D not putting a fucking stick on a puck coming in one-on-one, -on -one, you cannot let a guy shoot through a, a D-man and score from the hash marks three times. You can't let pucks go to like through you. Through you. you can't yeah. go seven hole, can't go five hole. Paul Mary, I'm glad you brought him up, Scoopsy. I mean, that short side top titty shot to win that. I mean, sometimes <laughs> you got to tip your hat on that. The you Islanders, could use the Manscaped. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he could definitely use it. He's got, the, he's got the fucking from his head to his beard to his ears all the way down his neck, right down to his toes, I bet. He could maybe trim him up. He could use the fucking weed whacker. Oh, no, he could use the weed whacker. He's a hairy motherfucker. For me, when it comes to Pitt, I think, I mean, obviously, Hazy, what you said about Jari, but I think they need 71 milk in here. Like, I'm, mm. I, I was looking this morning because we're recording on Tuesday, game two's tonight. Malkin, they're still not sure. I'm taking Pitt either way tonight. I'm taking them. But I think to win the series, Scoop say they need 71 healthy down the middle. Yeah. I mean, without 71, that's it, it just it just takes away so much. He's such a threat and he plays big minutes. Now you have somebody else step up that's hasn't done it all year. And you're gonna take over Evgeny Malkin's spot. I mean, fuck, that's unheard of. No one, there's no other Evgeny Malkin in Pittsburgh's lineup. So they, they need him back ASAP. And when you think Islanders like Barzell, what'd you think of Barzell's game one? I didn't think it was great. Like that kid needs to get going. If they I mean, want to I like, mean, he is playing with Komarov right now. How Leo Komarov's yeah. on the first yeah, line is pretty crazy. He was healthy scratch down the stretch too, wasn't he, Barzell? Yeah, Trotsky sat him one night for sure. That yeah. Pajol, that kid, fuck, he, he loves he's playoff a, hockey. Yeah, Say what game. you want. He fucks. Yeah, he he's does. like a little Brandon Gallagher, right? Like he's that pesky little right-handed fucking in-your-face you know, always around the always around the puck. You Sniffing. love to play with a guy like that too. That just is like that arrogant little fucker, like a David Perron. You know, yep. he's just yep. always in the right spots and always just fucking shit up. And that's exactly why he's got that big contract because he performs in the playoffs. He's, I mean, in the last couple of years here, he's made himself a household name when it comes to playoff hockey. I, I love that kid's game. He plays with a lot of jam and he goes to those hard areas up dog just like you did he loves it who are you taking in game 2 hazy it's tonight tuesday who are you taking i'm taking uh, pitt who are you taking yeah i'm taking pittsburgh but i need to start uh adjusting my bets here cuz i keep looking at myself and i'm taking a lot of favorites and that first day i think uh three of the favorites lost so all the road teams i did not right. have a good day i'm going to ask you a little question about the puck line here in a bit central division blender division it should be called the fucking fun division, the National League division. There's fans, there's people fucking drinking. <laughs> it's unbelievable. First of all, Broadway, what'd you think of me and Uppy touched on it? The Tampa, Florida game. I said, and Uppy agreed with me, it's the best game that I've watched since 2019. Uh, the Blues and Bruins. I mean, it was unbelievable. I, it felt normal, Broadway. I couldn't take my eyes off the TV. Oh, it's like I sit there. I watch Bruins games kind of wire to wire, and the other games I kind of tune in back and forth. That puck drop in that Tampa, Florida game, and I was glued to it. And that 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 series, those teams fucking hate each other. Like that that is going to be a long, hard series. I want to know how they're going to be able to move on to round two because these guys are going to kill each other in this in this seven games. And then obviously with the Sam Bennett suspension, what you what were your thoughts on that? I mean, there were so many hits that were borderline, which I loved. But did you think it was the right call with the one gamer? Or I thought maybe five in a game in the first game, and then it would have been done with. What were your thoughts on that? I I've watched it a bunch, and and I've seen people break it down, and I kind of tried not to mess around with my thoughts on it all. At first, I just thought it should have been five. In a game, he definitely should have been tossed. And, I mean, maybe you can slap on a fine. I don't know how they do the fines in the playoff hockey. But, I mean, that hit was pretty fucking malicious. But it goes both ways. Like, McDonough had a big hit. Stamkos had a big hit. So, if you're going to start suspending guys, especially a guy like Bennett, who's playing really well for the Florida Panthers, I mean, you're putting that at a big-time disadvantage taking him out of the lineup. Yeah, exactly. It's it's It'll be interesting to see how game two goes. They're going with Dreger. Um Carolina, Nashville. They said there was 12,000 people in that barn in Carolina, Broadway. I'm taking the over on that oh, in the Parley over. Cafe. They're, that barn looks sold out. Princey had an awesome video he posted to the Mission Curfew account, and that place looked like it was rocking. It made me want to go to Carolina. There's not much going on in Carolina, but I want to go to that game bad. Yeah, I mean, that place was fucking going. Yeah, yeah. And, like, that rink always has good atmosphere, like me and Up were saying, but that was a place... I mean, I was impressed with it. The towels were humming when they came out. It was, what'd you think of the game? I thought Preds hung tough, but then Carolina, Jordan Stahl was doing some fucking. See, I think the Preds kind of gave everybody a false hope. I thought they hung tough, but I honestly don't think they have a chance in this series. Like, I mean, they hung around the first period and, and then it was 2-2 at the end of two, but Nashville had five shots on net in that second period. Carolina, I think, almost outshot them 2-1. to one. I just think 
Nashville needs to dial in their D zone in those hard areas because they're giving up big time goals from blow the goal line, just puck watching. And it's crazy to me because I played for John Hines and John Hines is huge on defending those hard areas. So I can only imagine, I mean, no, it's playoffs, but their practice probably sucks. He might be doing picket fence in the playoffs. <laughs> What's picket fence? <laughs> Picking fences when all the guys line up in a row and you go one on one in front of the net and you just take sticks. It's the basically calling out your defenseman that in your centerman that you better start defending down low. Or oh, was- this is going to be a sweep. I thought Carolina completely outplayed him. You can't be doing that come playoff time, can you? Even if you did get blown out in game I one. I saw the Oilers doing it in practice the other day, actually. I follow well, my boy Jason Greger had it on wow. uh, from practice one on ones and then back checking all the way hard. No. Oh, yeah. So one on one in front of the net, it's and then brutal. boom, whistle, and you chase that D man down the whole length of the ice. That's her, that's a drill you do in fucking October. I think it's to just say to Edmonton, you want to battle in in the Ozone, you better get back and battle yeah. it back there. Listen, Dave they, Tippett knows what he's doing. Yeah, exactly. I had that Kenny Holland on, by the way. He's a fucking sharp guy, right? He is. Fuck, yeah. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, our segment here brought to you by Good Life. It's called the Fine Fun Broadway, and we're gonna me and Uppy. With your top titty, the top titty league presented by DraftKings. The Updog has gone two days, two weeks, I apologize, two weeks without it. And I missed last week because of Friday golf with the Updog. So we're in the fine fund. How much are you going to fine us? And Uppy, two weeks in a row. I know, I reserved my spot. Yeah, and then Uppy, I just at least got Uppy's drunk. name was on the sheet. <laughs> yeah. Oops, you were nowhere to be found, oh, bud. I, I listen, paid my three bucks. There was only, <laughs> I didn't pay. <laughs> there was only one, uh, listen. <laughs> If we're going to do a kangaroo court here, my defense is, and kangaroo courts are the best. Remember, you always get like the Russian guy that couldn't speak English to be the guy's attorney. Yeah. <laughs> there was only one game in the top titty league that I missed. So yeah. listen, ah, I'm okay. fucking a primetime player, bud. I'm not fucking showing up for one tilt on a top titty league. That's my excuse. When really what happened, uh, Broadway, I was drunk on the golf course. Because I, <laughs> I got high. Because I got high. Well, I think the only, the, the only fine I could come up with you guys, now that I'm back on the sauce, I, I'm... As a GM of the top titty, I'll invite yeah. you back into this week, and you guys might you guys might have to beat me this week, or I might be collecting another bottle of wine from the two of you. Hey, uh, fuck! You, you had, had a big week, Camus? Hazy. You did have a big week, though. You had a big week on the te- top titty. Yeah, I got I got another uh, uh, another payout, top, uh, top thirty three payout. <laughs> and I'm starting oh, to collect what? money. I kind of love this DraftKings. It's, I'm making money here, boys. They might be starting to pay bills. By the way, I my, mean these DraftKings guys are unbelievable. It's everywhere. I know that we're playing it's against fucking we're everywhere. Playing Brento, against professional. Brento, my boy. Oh, boys, he he had a great week too. He was a top ten. Your brother. That well, was he was leading. He was leading for a while. I got that was getting the updates, and then as he was sending them, I'm like, shit, I missed again. Fine, fine day. Talk about a beauty alert! Look at the guy who won this thing. Top shelf. What is it? Top shelf. Top ripping. shelf ripping darts. He was, the, <laughs> he was the winner this week, and he had 102.9 points. But, like, the, the crazy thing with this week in the top titty, because it was kind of like the ultimate uh, one-on-one with the one game going, he he was a genius by putting Connor Hallebeck as his captain. So every, t- every team in the top titty this week that was in the top five had Connor Hallebeck as their, as their captain. And as a captain, you got one and a half extra points. So he went off for uh, – I think it was 34.2 points, but whereas a guy that got six had him as a flex and he only got 22 points. So all those guys in the top five, they must have knew something I didn't. I didn't. I went no goaltender this week, boys. Well, there's some fucking inside scoops. Yeah, yeah, I love it. So I didn't even know you could fucking name your captain. Well, no, they made that, that rule. That was just be- this week. Yeah, they okay. made the rule this week. But Hazy, explain the flex to the boys. Yeah. The flex was so the, that's just kind of your this utility week guy. Uh, well, this week that's it's usually the utility guy, but this week he had one captain and it was, I believe, five or six flexes. So it was only six total players, whereas you have the nine. Mm. But like the big thing in uh the guys that win is the guys that cost the the least amount of money that end up giving up points. Cause I try to put Austin Matthews as my captain, thinking I'm gonna get an extra one and a half points, and he laid an absolute egg. Yeah, he had to have been checked out for this game, knowing that there's that was like oh, their last game of the season for them. He was, I took the Jets to win that game. Woo! Hey, uh, Hazy, is there any advantage to like starting a goalie that's not going to play? Like, because you don't risk getting scored on, or do you have to start someone like Hellebach that's going to put up some numbers for you? 
I think when with like a normal week <laughs> like this weekend, you could uh, top titty, you'd enough. be starting a goalie every time because even if they they got to get lit up for you to lose points. So you can you could even collect like four or five points versus zero. So I'd always put a, the starting goalie in. So so sorry, but the way you asked that question said like, can you pick a goalie that's not going to play so, so he doesn't just, have any goals against? Yeah, like so. Yeah. You just get a I zero. You get a zero. Instead but you can't. You can't. Can you get negative points? You can get negative, but I think the way it happens. So my is like, question to you is, if I'm like up against the field if, goal if, kicker, no, my question to you, listen, is if I'm up against the cap, uh, and I want to fucking stack my front three with McKinnon, Ratnan, and Landis Cog, yeah, and I start fucking. Yeah, that's they don't. True. They don't. I don't think no, they make no, the, the goalies, goalies cheap. are like you could get a goalie for like three grand. No, the goalies are expensive. Yeah, so yeah, you, the goalies. Are I get what you're saying, Obes. It, it could be the right play, but then again, you're kind of factoring in like you're taking zero points, whereas the guy that you might have put in could get you at ten points. But it's like, like an, it's like an where, NFL fantasy when you just take the team on their bye week as the defensive yeah. team, so they don't have any like. Well, I've lost fucking fantasy because of my defense giving up too many points. It's <laughs> pricks. Pricks. Um, so where am I cutting corners in Hazy? On the back end, am I getting a fucking stay at homer that will just block biscuits and get me a couple pluses? Where if I'm trying to trim my squad to save me cash, like if I'm trying to fucking sign up show on a one year fucking PTO, where am I looking? Uh the main thing that I look for is a guy like Perot who's kind of playing like third, fourth line. But he plays on the second power play. So he might be able to cash in on the second power play and he costs you like two grand. So that guy right there is going to help your team, but he didn't really do much for me last week. But that's what you got to look at. When you're looking at your teams, you got to kind of look for those guys that are second power play that might get that 30 seconds or maybe the coach is pissed at the top power play and they fucking put that second unit out and they cash in. That's where I think the most value is. Do faceoffs matter come playoff time because these guys are taking a lot of faceoffs? Do faceoffs come into play? Because if so, you could get a guy like Nate Thompson who's going to probably take every fucking D-zone face-off here. Do they matter at all, or should we look into that? No, the face-offs are not – winning face-offs has nothing to do with it, but block shots and shots on goal are huge. So if you can find a guy who's sitting in that one-timer spot, like on a second power play, like I said, is that guy could help you a lot. Where's Greg Zana when you need him? So, <laughs> 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 so blocking biskies is big. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So PK guys, you could take a PK guy totally. and hope that he gets ten fucking bl- mm-hmm. shot blocks. Then you get like bonus points too in the top city. If they get over X amount of block shots, it's probably like five. You get a you get a. He's bonus heating category. up like NBA Jam. <laughs> He's heating up. Oh, what a game! Right, Broadway. That's great insight for the fellows there, buddy. Thanks for helping me out. I had no fucking clue on the on the backup tendy thing. So this week's <laughs> top titty. We got playoff hockey, obviously. We got Washington against your former Boston Bruins, Carolina, Nashville, Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Colorado, St. Louis, fella. What a night of games. Oh, fuck, I'll be what taking those in drunk. Oh, that's going to be a lot of talent in those games. This is exciting to finally get a couple more games to choose from. The one-on-one was tough for, for Broadway. Yeah, that was tough out of the gates. Who are you liking this, this Friday, fella? All right, so this Friday for Top Titty, if we're going to break it down, uh, with the Caps Boston, a guy like Charlie Coyle is a guy that I think is a great playoff performer. So he's a guy that I'll be looking to add in my team. And then the goalie from Carolina is, like we were talking goalies for Top Titty, he's the guy I'm going to be starting this week just because I don't think Nashville has much up front. I think the only bright spot for Nashville is uh, Ben Forsberg. So you're talking Nelkovich. You're talking Nelkovich for Carolina. Yeah, yeah, he's been unbelievable. Peter Mrazek's been on the bench, which was kind of surprising. But Me too. I was surprised with stretch. that. But uh, Jets versus Edmonton, I think Kyle Connor and uh, McDavid and Drysdale for Edmonton, I think that's a game where you got to ride one of those big dogs. Those guys have all been playing well. So they'll be looking to be at the top of my top titty roster. And then Avalanche and St. Louis, I'm riding my boy McCarr. I ride him every week in this league, and he performs and a guy that they can get at low value or low cost with high value is uh, Brandon Saad. He's a guy that's played in the playoffs a lot his whole career, Stanley Cup champion. I think he's a guy that could be a big time playoff performer. Saad played unbelievable. He, got a lot of he looks. played he played great in game one. Yep. He could have had a couple. Mm-hmm. So that's a good little inside scoop there, Broadway. How about a guy like uh, Chris Russell for Edmonton? Talking about blocking shots, that guy <laughs> made a living out of it. He's still fucking make. He's still doing it. That might be a good little. Sleeper Does he the get Edmonton? the second power play time too? 
No, they I only have one. They only so. have one power. Well, they got unit. one unit, but you got to get this. Yeah, they, they only have one unit, and they one score unit with one D man on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Tyson Berry. Yeah. So shout out to Bears. He won the fucking D scoring, didn't he? Bears. I think he won it. Fucking cha ching, cha ching, yeah, cha ching. So. Um, Broadway. Let's move into the parlay cafe, fella. Do you got a Friday parlay cafe? And did you hit your parlay last last night? I think you did, didn't you? I hit a parlay last night with uh, Boston, uh, Carolina. In Colorado. Uh, Colorado, so that was that was huge to me. Get off the get the week going in the right way. But for I got a parlay for Thursday's night's game with because uh, there's a lot of games on Thursday, and I think a Tampa Vegas Toronto and that game one in Toronto. That's the parlay that I'm going to be buzzing with on Thursday. But I, of course, I'll have one for Friday for you, fella. But I just got to go look at the lines first. Toronto, Tampa. In Vegas. In Vegas, you got you like Vegas going into mini in game three and stealing it. Oh, I sure do because I think the, I think that that game in mini was kind of a fluke. I mean, it was one nothing. I think Mark Andre Fleury played unbelievable for them, and I just think Vegas is just too deep, too too much experience in that team. I I can see them winning in five games. Broadway, that's great detail, buddy. We appreciate. It. I got a question for you on a puck line perspective here. All right, for the first time in NHL history, the first three games going to overtime. Have we missed the boat? Should we be taking the plus one and a half? Or can you see this continuing as a trend? Or what series may be good for our listeners to take the puck line plus one and a half? I think we missed the boat on the opening uh, weekend of that. Obviously, a lot of those games going to overtime. But then you go to games uh, like last night, you get a five to two victory, a four to one victory. So those puck lines would kill you. But a series where I think you should be taking the plus one and a half is Boston and Washington. I think those are going to be close games every single night. You might get a lot of overtimes in that series. Love it. Love it. Good that's, insight, that's, that's, Jimmy. That's, that's the stuff we need here. I'm missing curfew foul. Maybe you'll get me back in the old top titty league with that info. <laughs> and I, hey, we need to make some money here because I had a tough stretch and I'm still... I haven't seen my brother. I know he's back from Florida, but I got a bone to pick with him because I rode, like we know, I rode those flyers and they put me in the red. <laughs> you were betting with your heart, fella. And there's that. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're the type of guy you wear your heart on your sleeve and fuck. Loyalty. I mean. So Good Life Fine Fun presented by Good Life Up Dog. We're fine. What'd you find us? A bowl of red wine? Scoopsy? Yeah, I think the fine, that's the way. I'll, I'll let you guys back in the league this week. Okay. And I think one of you guys needs to beat me this week in top titty. If you guys beat me, it's a wash. If I uh, if I beat both of you guys, then you guys can come up with uh, one bottle of wine and add that to my collection. Deal. Sounds fair Let's to me. Let's fucking go. What, what did you used to get fined for when you played? What was the thing you got most fined for? I would get, uh, <laughs> they would be straight five up. Uh, five hundred dollars straight up fines for usually making out in the bar. Making out in the club, five hundred. Well Just, worth it though, I would yeah, say. I, you know what? I was never the late guy. No, especially if it was a team dinner. Well, I'm when you didn't go to bed, to you didn't have to get up, right? So you're all right. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's like you show up late, or you know, I was never that guy, and you can't be that guy. You can't be late. You were never but, late. No, I fucking realized if you're late, you were late a couple times for yeah. sure. You were late only with you when I had fucking <laughs> when I thought the game was. You at made six. me late for my preseason game. Like oh, I got tons of time. <laughs> I got tons of time. Lucky you fucking threw a backhand sauce to me. That was unbelievable. Oh yeah, thank God for Frosty. Call I us. used to I used to get the fine for PDA too for the, you know in the club. I used public to display like, of affection. Folks. I pay that five hundred. Well, I was it. trying to set the tone of the club for time. the boys. Hey, come on, hey. Oh yeah, it's national league. So Broadway, we appreciate you. Parlay Cafe. Say it again for us Thursday night. Who you got? Thursday night, we got Tampa, Vegas, and Toronto. You heard All it All money line, boys. The Parlay Cafe is open for business. Top titty. Booyah. <music> Up dog. Canada Epps, buddy. Crop Tober. These boys want us to go up there. They sure do. I think we should go up there and see these Humboldt beauties. County. You ever been up to Humboldt County? Fuck, I don't even know. I've never been. I'll go up there though and look at all these weed crops. Bring your weed there. whacker because you're going to be <laughs> cropping a lot of this, uh, you know, this THC hemp based marijuana for our uh, for our Canada's pouches, baby. Love it, baby. I'm chewing these things like they're going out of style. So I know Jimmy over there on the East Coast has been chewing these like they're going out of style, but you have been too. And thank God you're getting all these new tins in, Obes, because I've been chewing them during our show. Yeah. No, I get it. I use the promo code Curfew Cali, right? That's what it is. I get the promo. Curfew Cali, Curfew baby. Curfew Cali. I get my standard order. I'll tell you guys out there. I get five California rolls. 
So I get 25 tins. Last me about 10 days. And then I fucking <laughs> order some more, Broadway. That's how I do it, bud. Hazy and you on the East Coast, how are you getting all your tins? I'm ordering them, and I, I'm more of a fruity guy when it comes to the Canada dips. I love the citrus ones. I think they're so juicy. And I've been, like I've said before, boys, I use these things all day on the golf course. I think that's where they taste the best. They sure do. And traveling, too. Like, when you're just jumping in your car, it's nice to just you know, I got Canada dips for... tins all over my fucking car. I mean, they're everywhere. Half empty, all empty, couple in there. They're everywhere. So, Croptober. This is going on for the next few weeks. Every couple of weeks, there's a new winner, four total winners, and one chosen by a best Instagram photo with the hashtag Croptober2021. All five winners get a plus one, so all 10 consumers come to Humboldt October 15th to 18th. All the expenses paid, only U.S. entries. Day one. Insane behind-the-scenes marijuana farm tours. Uppy, that sounds like heaven to the boys. A little Super. private concert after. And a private concert. Day two, Redwoods, Rivers. And I know you like this because you can take your tarp off. Beaches. Beaches and bitches, baby. So tune into these boys. It's a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go see how uh, the new Canadips is making some of their finest, finest tins, finest pouches. Uh, so tune in to CanadipsCBD.com backslash croptober er Croptober. Croptober. And candips on IG, link to the bio to enter. Welcome back to Missing Curfew, Up Dog. Uh, we got another great guest, a guy who I got to be honest with, I was a fan of back in the day, and then uh, our paths crossed throughout the, the hockey world. He's done some cool stuff throughout hockey that I can't get, uh, can't wait to get into it with. But our boy Cabby, what's up, Cabby? Thanks for joining yes, us. Yes, yes. <laughs> I there made he it. Is. There I made he it. is. Thank you. Thank you. I yeah. know that a couple of guests had to cancel in order for me to like you go deep down the bench to you know to call my name to get out there on the fourth line. But I appreciate it nonetheless getting some time with you fellas. No, no he's yeah. been number one. We've been wanting to get him for a while. We just been, dude. I mean, when Cavi back in the day, buddy. I remember you did. We did one thing in LA when you came out to LA. I think it was the Canucks and the Kings in the playoffs, and we did a thing at the rink there. And I was like, dude, we got a party when I get back into Toronto. When I got back to the city, that's right. And you were the first guy I hit up. I'm like, yo, Cavi, I'm in the city. Loops is here. Let's rock. I, and I think we went out on King Street. I think I did something about your bag, like your hockey bag. Uh, they, they, I would do such dumbass things. And even in the playoffs where like the media was like so much more intense, the PR guys were so much more intense. I had to lean on dudes that I had either were great personalities and the like bleep the traditional conventional stuff like yourself, or um, <laughs> I had to like, I would wait out. So, you know, when it's Canucks and in, in, in LA, it was probably like Naslin or Naslin was probably the cap. I think he was the captain back then. Good looking so I guy. Was like, was it, it was Naslin, that, right? That year, that year was, that was the Sedin. So Naslin was a little bit oh. before that, but they, okay, they, they played the Kings in playoffs when Naslin was the captain too, though. Yeah, back in the day. And then I, so I would wait like till the scrum, like, you know, so there's like 20 reporters circling a player and they would ask, you know, how does it feel? Blah, blah, blah. You know, the same three, four questions that you guys would, you guys have gotten for literally 20 years. And then I would sort of sneak in and I would ask about like, you know, somebody's phone or like, what do you eat before games? Like dumb things. Cause I only want to know about you guys as players and not so much the game. So I was covering more like hockey culture and like amplifying the personality of hockey players because, you know, obviously where we're from, hockey is the NFL of Canada. And um, yeah. it was, it was really special when, when guys played along when they got it. Cause I wasn't trying to, I wasn't there with an agenda. I was there to have fun. And once dudes understood it, like, oh, okay, I can let my guard down a little bit and have fun with this chubby, weird reporter <laughs> who's like wearing baseball caps and, you know, you know, Jordans. And I didn't look like anybody else in the room, literally, whether it's the media or the players, unless it was like LA, like unless Wayne Simmons was there or like if it was Montreal <laughs> PK was there or Joel Ward in Nashville. Like they're very, it was like a handful of Joel again, a handful of dudes that look like me. So it, I was a little bit of an oddball and then asking odd questions, but it, it, it worked when guys like you, and we also did something at the ESPYs. Yeah. We did something about uh, being famous, and I think I brought an iPad. I haven't seen the segment in a while, but you and, and Joffrey had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I do remember those nights, uh, albeit blurry, in Toronto, where we. Um, hey, have you told the? Have you told the? Now I think 
the statute of limitations has passed. Have you told the Washington Capitals rookie party story? I, I yeah, I have with within Vancouver. Yeah, yeah, I have told that story about where I <laughs> where I text Peter after the game and the city was dead. I'm like, where the fuck is everyone, Peter? He's like, <laughs> right? he's like, up in up in they were all at this one hotel. This one, he's on like, the penthouse. Yeah, he's like, it's Washington Capitals rookie party, and I had the day off the next day, so I'm like. Fuck it. Ask the boys if they mind if I slide over. <laughs> so sure enough, I end up the only guy in there at the Washington Capitals. And me and Peter Gurgis and a couple of broads were the last four standing there. Everyone else is gone. So <laughs> I remember seeing you. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Like, I thought it was, I don't know. I thought there was some unwritten rule about, I just didn't know that hockey players were all, like, uh, many of them friends off the ice. And then you were like, you were going to play them in like two, two or nights. three days. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I saw you there and I was like, yeah, I mean, it was a vortex of, of uh, uh talent in vancouver because they were there were like 40 dudes there and about 120 baddies <laughs> yeah. there were just baddies everywhere and um it was one of the one of the highlights of of my uh experience with hockey dudes yeah it was the, i like we won the game that night i'm like Fuck, where, are the, where, are the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. where where are the girls like got, where are the girls and then like sure enough they were all there up here. with their cell phones and everything locked like yeah. hey you come in this room you put your cell phone in this basket and yeah, no phones. Come, yeah, no, no phones, you come on in. Sure. And that was the start. First of all, Peter Gurgis, have you been following his Instagram lately? This guy's just running around Miami like he fucking owns the place, huh? Yeah, Peter, you know, and I know, so for the audience, Peter is a, is a restaurateur. He's a business owner. He has a, a restaurants in Vancouver and, and made his name Vancouver, and he's, he's moved back to Toronto. Peter's kind of sort of descended into this, like, like this, you know, when you can go like down YouTube rabbit holes of like conspiracy theories and like, oh yeah, I love Peter, but he's kind of on the, like politically just in a different space. And it's, uh, and I've seen some other people sort of go over there since the pandemic, because you know, the lockdown rules in Canada are kind of repressive and, but anyway, so, but yeah, Peter, yeah, to your point, he's in Miami. He's going to open a, a restaurant, like a supper club there. So I, I messaged him the other day. I'm like, bro, we need to talk about your finances. You cannot, this is not a sustainable lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. You're not freaking <laughs> Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, <laughs> Bill Gates, where your checking account just says unlimited. It's the unlimited side. Like you're, you're not those dudes. So you when know you what? get back, we well, need to have a sit down. It's true. And it's a good point. And, and, and up, he's got a question for you about how you made the guys comfortable. But the last thing on Peter Gurge is like, <laughs> buddy, but before he opened up a hundred nights in Vancouver, when I was playing there, like he was broke, he was going through like a lawsuit with his uncle and he didn't have two nickels to rub together. And then all That's of a sudden, right. so you oh. got to give him credit because he does have balls when it comes to that, like just going forward. And it worked out for him in Vancouver and Toronto. Definitely. He definitely has a vision and he's, and he sticks to it. And then it's just like, Peter knows everyone. Like you could go to any, you could go to Nashville. You could go to, you I could was probably in, go to France. Like I was Paris in Paris. Or I, London. That's so funny. You said I was in, I played hockey in Switzerland last year, this time. Well, actually just before this time. And sure enough, I I'm like, I swear Peter was just here. You know, I'm in Paris with two guys from my Swiss team. I'm like, let me hit him up. He's like, ah, up dog. I just left, but go see my boys at, uh, you know, the titty twister or this other bar. And <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm like, group. okay, okay. So, uh, you know, I text these guys. I'm like, hey, boys, I'm, I'm in town. A couple hockey guys. These guys are monsters, you know, 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, but I need you to set us up, you know, the way Peter Gurges would. So they're like, oh, Peter, we love him. He was just here. And we go in and these guys have never seen a night like this in their <laughs> lives, right? They're Amazing. just like, I'm talking bottles and girls. And they're just like, holy shit. And, you know, of course, I'm like, well, you guys are my guests. So I'm going to take care of this. And they're like, Friend of Peter, friend of ours, you know, here's a free bottle of, you know, because Peter's the champagne king of Canada too, right? He sure is. He, he, he sells sure more is. bottles of Dom than I think anyone in, in Canada, which uh, is, is a pretty big... I think that's true. It is true. true. And the last Peter story before we move on, <laughs> he comes out to Hollywood before the pandemic. It's me, him, and uh, I think... One player that's still in the name in the NHL, which will, will remain nameless, but Peter okay. starts popping these bottles at, at uh, One Oak Cabbie, and he's going buck titty, <laughs> and I'm thinking, these are adding up, right? And then the check comes, and he looks at me, and the current NHL player is like, you boys don't mind splitting this three ways, do you? <laughs> <laughs> that's his move. That's, that's his move. That's yeah. his move, but you got to That, that sounds him. exactly like Peter. So, Cabbie, he's I, the plug. He's yeah, the go plug. ahead, Scott. Cabbie, I just wanted to dive into what we were just talking about before, um, uh, just about hockey players in general, and what I've seen you've been able to do in, in your tenure around the, the game and the teams and these players is bring out a side of us that, you know, normally, you know, either our coach or our GM 
or you know the 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 fans like aren't expecting right or or they don't ever want us to get to that level. I just watched you with Connor. I, I I watched a video the other night with with you and McDavid. You know you guys are racing little like you know toy trucks and and you know you're laughing and doing games like texting like the fastest way you can text uh, your mom or whatever. <laughs> like the, these games. How have you been able to curate like that artistic side of you to to allow us to kind of open up and. You know, for fans, it's incredible because you're bringing out a side of us that they don't see under a helmet or with skates on. Um, and, and man, it's just it's it's uplifting. It's great. Uh, you see like sides of these young kids now that that we all need to see because ESPN and Turner, they want to see that, too. So like, how have you been able to, to artistically do that? Well, thanks, man. Thanks for, for, for mentioning it. I, I have a, a great collaborator, uh, Dave Cricks, my man, D. And we just <laughs> Crixie, I my man, D. Yeah. Yeah. So we. um you know, we would just bounce ideas off each other. And in many ways, like we, we tried to, we, we fashioned the content that we created, uh, kind of like, um, talk show hosts. So like Conan and Kimmel and Fallon, like they're amazing. Cause they get this time time with these A-listers and they play games and it's just fun. So I, I understood early on that I'm, I want to entertain first and inform second. Now, it wasn't like a conscious thing. Like I'm going to watch what Conan does. Conan was, is my favorite of the talk show hosts, but I, I felt like a sense of fearlessness because there was no one else in the space, you know, bringing pop culture and sports together. And certainly in hockey, your guys' personalities were so repressed. And for me, I just like, I want to be friends with everybody. So I'll put my arm around guys. Yeah. I'll touch guys on their chest. I'll put my face on. <laughs> and I love, I, I bring this up often, like Getzlaff will let me put like my, like almost noses touching nose, like my face, my hot <laughs> sweaty face against his face. And he'll just let me do it. I, there was a, there, there was a, I did a bit once with Kessler and Getzlaff. The, like when Kessler first went to the Ducks, and I just called it my two Ryans. And we brought wigs, like we brought wigs for <laughs> Ryan Getzlaff, who, who isn't sensitive that he's in his friggin' Mark Messier years, because some guys are sensitive about their hair, obviously. But this, so we like, I could, you know, I've never seen anybody like wearing wigs, and and it wasn't like an Afro wig. It was like someone's grandma's wig. But you know, you guys, one thing about hockey players is you guys chirp each other relentlessly so that just helps with that gives me a little bit of permission to chirp I, although i don't do it very much i like to be the butt of the jokes because i just think it just makes everybody feel more comfortable but anyway let me get back to your question scott um i think it was a relief like when i would ask guys about themselves sneakers what restaurants they want to go to like in the city music they would listen to and i was the same age as many of you guys. I'm, I'm older than you guys, but at the time when I was doing Cabby on the Street at the score, Cabby Presents at TSN. So it was like, they would smile. Like I, I remember I got Stamkos to do this bit where I was his acting coach and he would do different characters in the mirror before going to shoot <laughs> like a, a, a Coke commercial. Um, I wrote a, one of my favorites is I wrote this prank for Ben and Sagan, where they called their moms and they said they were going to propose to their girlfriends. Neither of them had girlfriends at the time. And then the twist was, uh, could they, they asked their moms if they could use grandma's ring to propose to their fictional girlfriends. <laughs> and just like the heartbreak of both Tyler Sagan's mom and Jamie Ben's mom. Cause they are like, this is the first time you're telling me about a girl. And now you're telling me you want to propose to a girl. And then you want to use Nana's ring. And it was like, it was, it was a lot of fun, but, um, you know, actually, you know where I got minted? This is where I got minted. I was covering the Stanley Cup playoffs in 2000. I started in 2007. It was, it was the Senators versus the Ducks. And that's where I became friends with um, Ryan Getzlaff and Dustin Penner, who is who was like a legend back in the day. I want, I want, I have a good, anyway, I have a good Dustin Penner story. <laughs> we I don't all know do. Much, but, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you guys do too, because he, I mean, he's in Newport as well. Yeah. I, I still believe, right? I yes, don't know if you see him as that. that you want to talk about and, going, you want to talk about going down rabbit holes. That boy, right? is, yes, that boy yeah, is in a rabbit yeah. hole right now. We can't get yeah. him out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's on, he's on like, he's in like the Southern hemisphere yeah, right exactly. now as far as rabbit holes go. Um, but um, what, when I would do these, these uh, interviews during like the playoffs where it's like super intense um, and I was in there kind of being a clown players back in Canada, like if they're playing, players are playing for American teams. 
they would see these segments on the score and then like they would text their boys like, yo, I saw you on cabbie. So I would, I would get like, validated from their boys back in their small towns while dudes are playing in Chicago or Detroit or Philadelphia. So, and I didn't really know this at the time, but it, it helped in getting access to some of these dudes. And then like when you had, I had like Zetterberg once I brought in, uh, they swept Colorado and it was, and Zetterberg was an absolute magician. Him and him and Datsuk played on the top line. I, I snuck in a broom in like game four <laughs> in color i snuck it into the into the dressing room and i was like yo bro i brought you a present and he's what is this i'm like it's go ahead and use it go ahead and uh, you use it on the ice go ahead and use it in the in the dressing room and uh it was just it was pretty ballsy and pretty bold and i probably should have been thrown out of there but i got away with it and that empowered me to, to like take big chances like that but more importantly the guys felt comfortable with me because I wasn't asking about concussions or losing streaks or playing time or <clears throat> the referees. I was just there to have fun. So that's what, that's what helped me, Scott. Yeah. And, and Cavi, dude, I was a fan of yours, man. When the score first came out and, and you started doing your thing and a guy I do, I work with now, Steve Coolis was on there. Cools. Yes. He's a great yeah. man. I host the power play with him. When you guys first started out, did, did you watch other programs like TSN? I know you work for eventually. And did you be like, you know, this is my chance to to bring this network to to give hockey exactly what they needed to show these personalities of their hockey players. Because I want to ask you about T, TNT and ESPN moving forward, but you guys did that in hockey, and, and it changed the way hockey players were viewed in Canada forever. I, I didn't think of it in such a conscious manner. I was like, I was just trying to do something fun and that people hadn't really seen in sports. I would, you know, when I was younger, I watched Ahmad Rashad on NBA. Uh, Inside. NBA's inside stuff. Yes, and he great. was like best friends with Michael Jordan. So he had access to the most celebrated athlete in history, arguably him or Muhammad Ali. So I was like, I, and I was like, this is Michael Jordan. Like he's playing, he's throwing the football around with Michael Jordan in his backyard. And I think subconsciously, I'm like, I want to do that too, even though I didn't really have those aspirations. But when in hockey, like hockey players were, were, the, you know, Wayne Gretzky is the Michael Jordan of Canada. And, and although it took me a long time to get to Wayne Gretzky on my way up, I still wanted to have fun with these guys that I still revered. And I have a, I have to shout out that you mentioned Steve Cooley. So in the score days, it was um, Brian McCabe and Darcy Tucker uh, who were like Darcy Tucker was, you know, was a, <clears throat> he was like Wolverine on the ice. Like, yeah. you know, two and, of my and favorite Leafs early, of all times. Yeah. What's that? Two of my favorite Leafs, Tucks and Caber. Oh, my nice. favorite. Yeah. And um, they had a uh, an acrimonious relationship with the media. However, they would come back, you know, from the showers or whatever, come back into the room and do interviews with me because they could relax. And the Toronto media is like garish and, you know, every, you know, everybody's trying to blow up the players and not blow them up, but like put dudes on blast and like find faults and everything. And I just let them live. And so because those guys, you know, they had fun with me, uh, it, it, I think it's helped, um, with other players around the league. And certainly when guys would come, you know, come in, into can Canadian markets and the score would be on, and my segment would loop all the time that allowed me to get uh, a little bit more, um, uh, uh, availability with with um, some of the other some other players. What Cabby? What's the cra what's the craziest thing you've ever been able to get one of your guests to do? Like, because I'm sure you're like, I'm going to push this guy right now. <laughs> I'm going to see where he's going to go. What's what's like the crazy? I, I seen something yesterday that you had Usain Bolt do, which is pretty damn cool. Um, but maybe that's not on like the craziest thing. But um, yeah, like craziest. what was? You know, I wasn't. I, I never wanted to get guys in trouble. Yeah. And uh, so um, let's see. No, guys, that's the cabin. That was the biggest feather in your cap was that you're you're a funny dude, but guys trusted you, right? Like it's the day first day I met you. I was a fan. I'd watch you on the score, but I was like, Cabby, I'll do basically whatever the whatever you want me to do, brother, because because I know it's gonna be funny. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I've been talking to these guys interviewing these guys all year over here that are no disrespect to them. They work hard, but are not that interesting. So you grew the respect and the trust of players right away. Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, I got, I mean, nothing. I mean, I really guess you crazy. just, I guess we just uh, talked yeah, about I, I that. But I'm like, in my head, I'm like picturing Hussein Bolt doing this thing, and and he's like, I don't ever really do this for anyone, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, he gave me, yeah, he gave me his signature, his signature move. So we were racing um, remote controlled cars because 
I, I was so stressed about that interview. It took us nine years to get Usain Bolt. That's crazy. And then I was laying in bed. I'm like, oh my gosh, how can I race the fastest man on earth? Like what, what, how can I normalize this dude who is not a normal human being? No. And then I came up with the idea of, of remote control cars. I'm like, let me just go to Toys R Us and just find the best. And then I saw the Super Mario Kart. I'm like, this is amazing. Like everybody knows Mario Kart. I'm sure everybody's played it. So he chose Yoshi and I was Mario and then he won. And then, uh, yeah. yeah, he gave me, his, uh, I once got Mike Tyson to put Vaseline on my face. That, <laughs> I mean, it's not crazy, but it's very odd. And he actually put some Vaseline behind my ears. And he said, just in case you want to bite the, someone wants to bite your ears. He kind of slipped that in while he was applying a huge glob of Vaseline on my face. And I was in his backyard too. It was, that was, was so, so weird. Um, that's cool. No, that's cool. With the tigers. Shoot, I, I wish I wish I had guys like um, you know, I had um remember when we when Doritos had those like ghost pepper chips? Like yeah. one chip was like fifty bucks and it was like the 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 most scorching hot. So I, I brought that to the gray cup and I had like the Calgary Stampede. I know this isn't hockey. No, Calgary okay. Stampeders and right. the and the Toronto Argonauts eat some of these chips and then we each we bought like a four liter jug of milk because milk is supposed to um it's supposed to take away the sting of the, of the pepper and the next the next year there was a guy so calgary lost the game and one of the guys one of the starters on the defense blamed the chip like blame me for the loss because he, he said i didn't feel right the next game, <laughs> the next game. <laughs> so then i was i was never able to interview that guy again because he blamed me for the for the the ghost pepper thing. So I I, mean, I, I was not I got to tell a quick story now that you brought up the milk being the only cure thing for any sort of burns or or things that are hot. I'm in Costa Rica a couple of years ago and you know we're all getting banged up at the house and my girl who likes spicy margaritas, you know, crazy amounts of jalapenos like, "Hey, can you go make me a drink?" So I you know sneak off of the kitchen, I cut these jalapenos and I start squeezing them in there. Oh no. And I bring it back to her, you know, on ice, it's a nice drink, it's super spicy and I sneak off to go take a piss. And when I come back, I'm in the room, we're all just kind of <laughs> hanging out. I all of a sudden feel this burn that I have never felt in my life on my ball sack. And I look around and I go, oh my God. And I literally fall to the ground, squeezing my nuts, just like, oh, I'm in so much pain. And everyone's looking at me like, what's going on with this guy? I'm like the jalapenos. <laughs> I, so because I just, you know, I went to the bathroom and I came back, I had grabbed like underneath, you know, yeah, and I sack. ran into the pool and I jumped into the pool and that almost made it worse. So yeah, then I'm like, dude. What? so it's so funny that I have this, I have this lip chap stuff right here <laughs> with missing curfew lip chap right here. Yeah. I had to rub lip stuff all over my balls. That was like, <laughs> I was like, it that was, was the cure? so bad. Well, that was the only cure I could think of. But now that you brought up milk, I'm like, oh, I should have had a, Just I should have had a cup of milk. Just sacrate the milk. I was, <laughs> Christy, Christina had one Holy of these. Geez. I'm just like rubbing it all over. And it was the only thing that could, could cure my, my pain. Oh. You've had a different kind of bird before the now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it hurts so bad. Hey, Cabby, man. Um, yes. Me and Uppy, you know, when ESPN and TA and T signed the deal with the NHL. Yeah. You know, we were super excited about it. And I, I know you're super busy with other stuff, but your name came to mind. What were your thoughts? Do you have any plans in getting involved with them? Or, or just, I think it's good for Hockey in the States to have it on TNT and ESPN. It's, it's huge for the NHL. It's, yeah. it's, ESPN does a great job with its live properties to make them important and to sort of, to elevate the game. And TNT with, you know, T Turner owns Bleacher Report and that's, Bleach Report, who I work for, okay. as well as as Turner, but Bleach Report amplifies and curates the culture of sports. So we're gonna see more posts with Ov and his little and his son, and like you know, whenever whenever LeBron, you know, and his kids at home are like do like they do a TikTok, that's like elevated to like the national account on Bleach Report. You know, there's there are gonna now. Uh, I would I would imagine that on the bleacher side they'll identify like who are the athletes that we wanna we wanna elevate because for for us it's Curry it's Braun and it's Zion so in the NHL I'm not exactly sure who that other than uh, Alex Ovechkin and Matthews Matthews like, I know he Matthews, plays in Canada Matthews is a guy 
Like that's a guy they would probably want to get involved for sure. You know what? He just did an AMA on BR. So at Matthews, because he likes fashion, yeah, exactly. that's like an easy, an easy play. You guys need to do the tunnel walks and maybe we'll see those now because like that's a monetized piece of content for NBA. It's like every team has a, you know, the tunnel walk sponsored by Michelob Ultra or, you know, some bank. And it's just, all it is is the team photographer just taking photos of dudes coming off the, the bus in their outfits and, that is like, there's almost two games in the NBA. It's the fashion game and then the product on the court. I imagine since and like every NHL dude is on Instagram and just sees how much love these basketball dudes get because of a lot of their fashion choices and whatever, that will now, that will elevate them. So yeah, ESPN, you know, I think Turner's doing all the winter classics. They're doing three of the seven Stanley Cup finals. ESPN will do four of the seven. It's absolutely going to elevate the game. And, you know, ESPN makes sports important. I mean, it's the leader in sports and Turner having, um, uh, I don't know which day of the week the NHL broadcasts are going to be. I, I was in a meeting yesterday and it, the, the, it hasn't been finalized, but very top line. It's definitely going to elevate the sport. And it's going to be, it's going to be dope. I haven't had any conversation. I don't think they think of me as a hockey guy. Yeah. <clears throat> I know I'm, I'm obviously from Canada. Yeah, you are a hockey but, guy deep down. Totally. Deep down you are. Yeah, well-rounded guy. Yeah, well-rounded. Well <laughs> Canadians rounded. are well-rounded. I appreciate rounded that. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm well-rounded like my round face. <laughs> um, so, so uh, I, you know, I would love to to do some content. I would love to do interviews and stuff. I'm, I'm in the betting category right now, which is exploding. And I'm still learning how to gamble on hockey. And I've just, I've just been taking, I've been betting on overs. I like first period overs, but I haven't, and every once in a while, I'll bet on like players scoring goals. You know, I had a text, I got a text from, I haven't told anybody this. I got a text from JVR, I want to say a week ago. And I just put out, I do these little silly playlists every week. He goes, um, because I'm listening to your playlist on the way to the rink. It better, it better, um, I better net, it better bring me a goal. I'm like, I'm betting on you to score tonight. Start with this particular song. He didn't score. And I think his team won 7 2. And I messaged him after the game, like, everybody scored but you, bro. And he just like, responded with, like, a ha ha. And then I bet him, I'm like, okay, maybe in the next game. So I bet another 100 bucks for him to score. He didn't score. So I'm on. JVR, you owe me 200 bucks, my dude. <laughs> Cabby, but, can and, you yeah. uh, can you talk a little bit about your your show that you're on right now with um yeah it's like MGM bets right MGM bets and NBA TV is that is that the yeah thanks man so we so at Turner I do these bet streams so it's I'm broadcasting a game these basketball games with two other people from a betting perspective so we're not like narrating the action but we're having like a conversation around betting so player props you know betting lines in in the corner in the quarters or halves. Uh, betting strategy. It's, it's try, it, we try to make it feel like a hang while we're watching a game. So it's on, um, bet MGM is one of them on the weekends. And then TNT bets is the other stream on, on, uh, on like Thursday, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then on bleacher side, we have a show right now called group chat where we talk about the NBA and we talk about like betting. And it's supposed to be again, another hang where we talk ish to each other a little bit. And we bet on player props. It's all like, our audience is very casual, not the hardcore better because the hardcore betters aren't going to watch Bleacher Report for like their betting info. They have their guys. They and and usually betters are like the they like know more than everybody. That's sort of their general disposition. They don't need any help with their bets. So we like we attract sort of the the novice betters. People are just kind of getting into the space. People like me who maybe bet 20 bucks on a game, but are trying to win 2000 on like a 10 leg parlay. So that's how we we customize our, our content. So that's what I'm I'm up to. I have a, I have a group chat soon and then, you know, NBA playoffs uh, we'll be doing a bunch and then we head into NFL and then I, you know what? I don't think we'll be doing hockey stuff yet. Ho the hockey deal starts next year, so I'll be jumping in on like first period overs and player props. And I, I'll probably just bet on McDavid every single game because he's, he's good for at least a point every game. Yeah. You're, that's, a, that's a safe bet. And I'll be tuning in next year because I could use a parlay cabby right now. I'm telling you, I could use a parlay <laughs> to save my both, life my right G. now, brother. Um, you talk about TNT again and, and, who knows if you'll get involved. I think you'd be great. But Charles Barkley, who I absolutely love. And listen, Cabby, I don't watch a whole lot of hoops anymore just because I'm watching so much hockey. But I tune into Inside the NBA after the game for the hour with him, Kenny, and Shaq. Barkley loves hockey. Do you think there's any chance he may get involved? And, and it's a no-brainer if he wants to get involved, right? 
Uh, yeah, but I don't know if the hockey audience is going to accept Charles Barkley. Like, you yeah. know, you, the, the hockey, the hockey cult, the hockey world is very particular. And you guys are like, some people are like, just stay away. We got it from here. We don't need any more fans. <laughs> kind of like UFC as well. Like if you try to like enter, if you don't enter in cautiously, then they'll like attack you. And I'm, and I'm speaking mostly like in the comment section of like posts and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Barkley, I believe he has a house in Arizona. I know he's friends with Wayne Gretzky. I mean, I, uh, the, the, the coyotes would probably be his team. And just having someone is like a hall Charles Barkley is a hall of famer in Springfield, uh, Massachusetts, and in the television hall of fame. So having him part of a couple of broadcasts would be fun. Just, um, chopping it up. I think, I don't know if this is confirmed, but I think I, I read Ed Olchek. Yeah. And um, Eddie O's in there for sure, which would be great. He's a beauty. I, don't, I can't remember who else. It would be great to have some new blood, like some new young voices, some different voices uh, in I the game. Wait. I um, think they're trying to get diverse Gretzky, voices because, you know, it, we, it hockey needs to grow in communities where it's underrepresented. And that will be a big area for growth. So, um, you know, Charles might be one of those. I mean, he's. Yeah. Uh, I love him. I, I love him. Uh, yeah, he's he's fun to watch. Um, nobody nobody really takes him seriously. He doesn't take himself <laughs> seriously, which makes it so much more enjoyable to uh, to consume and to uh, to watch. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. We got to ask you about uh, playoffs are about to start here. I know you're a Leafs guy, a Toronto guy. Uh, they officially won the North Division. You got to feel for some of these Leafs fans, bro. They can't go to games. They can't go to bars. Is this the year the Leafs win it and nobody can fucking celebrate? That would you know be the what? luck they had in Toronto, bro. It, yeah, I, I am a Toronto guy. I'm not necessarily a Leafs guy. I, I do have friends on the team. So it's weird, Shane, because I've become friends with some of you guys and like some of your friends, I end up rooting for them and not specifically their teams. Like I, I'm uh, Mike Richards is one of them. Like he's probably the the guy I'm the closest to him or Stoli, the guy I'm guys I'm closest to in uh, for, uh, in the NHL. So and like I've been to their homes and we've like you know I've I've crashed in their like guest rooms and like <laughs> I, I got to eat. Uh, uh, Mike Richards allowed me to eat Lucky Charms out of the Stanley Cup, a privilege I did not earn because I did not earn the right because I'm not a player. But I, you know, that one Sunday morning at his house in Kenora, I got to eat uh, out of the cup. So I ended up rooting for for dudes. But you know, it would be interesting if the <laughs> it'd be poetic if the Toronto Maple Leafs, <laughs> the most celebrated team in the sport, or the Canadians, are the most celebrated, but yeah. the, the the Leafs are, I guess, the biggest team. <laughs> they I, the the most heartbreak, there's like no parade i mean we had the raptors parade in 2019 oh, and there were two and a half million people that descended on the city even if we were before COVID times and the leafs won i don't think the parade would be that big uh but it would be something special i i like i listen last thing i put some money on uh the avalanche Me too. i put some money on the golden knights and i really should have put some money on carolina um you still got time you still got time I, I guess there's time. Yeah. There, but like the, you're not getting great value now. Like if Carolina might be like a plus 400 versus like three months ago, or even Florida three months ago, they may have been like a plus 1000. You put a hundred, couple hundred on there, get a nice payout. But, um, I'll be, I'll be uh, excited to watch the, uh, the playoffs. I may not be as dialed in as you guys, but I'll watch, I'll watch casually. Carolina Hurricanes plus seven fifty right now, Cabby. You can okay. jump on them. Okay. You can jump well, on them. That's that's what not bad. The and then have? what's what? What are the Panthers? The Panthers are plus two thousand right now. Wow. Oilers like plus sixteen hundred. Okay. I yeah. Mean, so there's still some value there. There's still some value I, there for the boys. You, you know, I mean, I you gotta you gotta go with the hot goalie and like uh, Florida's got Drieger and uh, uh, Bobrovsky. Carolina. Uh, Nadel Nadelkovic is the, the the Carolina goalie, right? Yeah, he's coming out of nowhere. They got him and Mraznik, but yeah, that guy, that kid's coming out of nowhere and been unreal for them. I know, I know. Jack Campbell's been nice for for the Maple Leafs. So, and then Mark Andre Fleury is 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 amazing. Even though like he was a cast off, but he's still like awesome. So I I probably listen. What'd you say? You said Florida's plus two thousand, and in Carolina's plus seven fifty. Yeah. 
Ooh, that's tempting. You might okay, get well, thank I you think, for planting those seeds. I think you've talked me into putting a little cash on Carolina. I might put a little cash <laughs> on Carolina. Um, a hot goalie will do I it mean, for you, man. Will. Yeah, and you got to get through Tampa and Florida, right? It's Tampa's hard. a little banged up. Headman's, yeah. But they'll all be back, but that's the biggest concern. Will they? Game. Will all the Tampa guys be back? Kucherov and Stammer are are supposed to be ready for game one. Yeah, so. that's an ace But are they going to be 100%? Are you getting like 80% of Stamkos? That's, that's the million. I know, right? That's the question. 67% of Kucherov. Has you might have to text Stammer and be like, how healthy are you feeling? Stammer, right? <laughs> <laughs> Stammer's a friend of the pod. Yeah. He's been on. He's been. Has he been great. on? Okay, nice. Because he is so hard to get. Like the I, and I and I, I'll praise uh, Paul a bit, Biz and and Whitney for getting him on like in previous podcasts o- over there. Because he's like, I'll only get to Stamkos like once every like three or four years, and then other times I'll message him, zero response. So salute <laughs> to you guys. Yeah, uh, forget him. And you know what, you guys. Because you guys are in the content game, it's it's a lot harder for dudes like me to get guests on shows because you guys are part of the fraternity. They are going to trust you because you 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 guys have gone through the NHL experience. You guys are 10, 12, 15 year vets and uh, you have that shared experience. So you like they know you guys provide a safe space and you guys what you guys do here, missing curfew is just try to have fun and that's what dudes want. They they talk about the X's and O's and all the narratives and the storylines every day. They just want to relax and you guys provide that for dude. So I, you know, you, you'll get some great guests and I'm sure you've had some freaking awesome pods in, in the past. So salute to you. Thank you. you thank you. We appreciate that. And I, I took Stammer out in Prague when he was 18 years old. So he owed me. I'm like, Stammer, you're coming on the podcast, <laughs> buddy. All right. You're coming on the podcast. Outstanding. Outstanding. Cabby, my man, last thing I really appreciate. I know you're a busy dude. I want to thank you, first of all, for everything you've done for hockey because you did make a difference back home in Canada. And I I hope you get involved down here with with TNT. Uh, It's been just over a year. We have a lot of good friends in Newport Beach that knew Colby and the relationship that you had built with them. Listen, you want to talk about a guy who wasn't easy with the media. He wasn't, but he grew to love you. Just real quick, what he meant to you and, and, and how crazy it's been a year since we lost such an iconic, not only basketball player, but person. Kobe Bryant is probably the most important athlete uh, in my career because Kobe allowed me to have fun with him and he was a global star and he allowed me to have fun with him and allowed himself to have fun in interviews when he'd never, he'd never done so before. Exactly. And I think it was because I was Canadian and because (laughs) I was fat and I'm just like a weirdo and I was asking to stay at his house. Then he realized he's like, Oh, okay, this guy's different. He's strange, but he's harmless. And once I built that trust with him in a short amount of time, between December of 05 and February of 06, that laid the foundation for all of the interviews I got to do after that. So I probably interviewed Kobe about 20 times. And, um, you know, the way that he passed, he left us in a a helicopter. I was the only person that got to go in a helicopter with him, like to shoot us, not, not as a passenger, but to actually record an interview with him in a helicopter and he elevated my career more than any other athlete. So I'll always be indebted and grateful to Kobe Bryant. Um, he, he just allowed himself to have fun. Cause you know, we saw him on the court as a tenacious uh, def- uh, competitor, but we didn't get to hear him crack jokes or have like a dry sense of humor or be silly and goofy. Like he sung to me once I brought him pajamas. I, <laughs> I brought him lunch. Like we traveled in a limousine. I would bring him. And I think that was probably when I started in, um, integrating props into my interviews. Cause it's just something that people had really never done before. Uh, so I'm, I'm forever grateful to, to Kobe Bryant. I, I, I remember when you brought the pajamas, that one was fucking hilarious. Thanks man. And Thank listen, you. if he likes fat Canadians, I, I mean, me and Kobe would have got along well then too. If that was, if that was, <laughs> if that was the reason, um, Cabby, you're the man, buddy. I'm proud of you. Uh, whenever we can mix Thanks, it up and go for a couple, let's do it again. Uh, we really appreciate this buddy. Yeah, buddy. I look, I look forward to it. Listen, I'm in Las Vegas, so I'm next door to you. So, uh, expect a text message very sh- soon if you guys aren't uh, uh, locked down in Cal. I think you guys are a little bit. Vegas, wide open, so I expect a few Moscow meals very soon. I got an answer for that. Let's just go catch a playoff yeah, game. Yeah, we're coming out to catch a playoff game. We'll let yeah, you know. There we go. We're, we're going to shoot some stuff out there. We'll rip it up. Wonderful. All right, Okay, man. let's get it. We'll bring the cameras and the props, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Cabby. Guys. Thanks, Cabby. My pleasure. Updog, 
Hammer the Over, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, big fella. It's Tuesday right now. It's at 118, Saturday night. Clippers, Mavericks. Hammer the Over. Let's drive that baby to zero and win some cash. Every 1,500 people brings it down a point, like the updog said. Let's hammer it to zero, baby. DraftKings, every 1,500 people, that line keeps coming down. Let's get her to zero and win some cash. Curfew King. Come on, Mr. Curfew. Up dog. Uh, first of all, thanks to Cabby for coming on, man. Just a, just a cool dude that, listen, I was a fan of his, man. When I was playing junior hockey and turned pro and the score came out and Steve Cools was on there and they were just trying to make something different than TSN and Sportsnet. Um, got to know him a little bit and he's just a fun loving dude. And I just think, you know, bring him on right now with the new ESPN deal, the new TNT deal. I think guys like him and, and stuff like that is good for the game, especially down here in the States. So thanks to Cabby and he's just a beauty. Yeah. You know what else I love is that he's a character, man. He's yeah. an entertainer. And in hockey, some of these guys that we watch on TV who aren't ex guys who speak from this, like fucking, uh, a news, like reporter with like terrible hair. And I'm not going to mention anyone's names, but they're like, <laughs> Who are you to have your opinion like this biased on the fact you've never put on a pair of skates ever? He gives this sport a fresh outlook. All the guys love him. He's best buddies with Stoli, you know. Stammer, Loops loved him. Loops, Mike Richards. Uh, and we all respect him. And he is a cool cat. Uh, so thanks for him for coming on. Um, I hope, man, I hope like TNT realizes what kind of guy this guy is and what they can get out of him for content with uh, with you know players and who knows maybe there's a little collab down the road yeah and i'm going to say one thing because playoff hockey started here and i'm watching all these games the, the intermission stuff it's it's fucking unwatchable <laughs> it totally is it, it's it is and it's no disrespect to anyone who's doing it because i don't think they've set them up for the best success but it, it's it's unwatchable i turn it off in between periods i turn it off yeah and I, and I don't want to. Can't hear I, I, wanna, I can't hear Dominic Moore talk yeah, about anything yeah, else. Yeah, like I, I just, I, I want to watch the intermission and I can't, it's unwatchable. Yeah. So anyways, to Cabby, you the Cabby. man, we love you. We'll see you in Vegas, hopefully here when the Golden Knights tie up the series tonight, Uppy. Or I guess this is Tuesday. It might be 1-1 when this comes out on Thursday. But to Cabby, you the man. And to, to people out there, just let's do some cool stuff with the game. Let's mix it up. I mean, go check out Cabby's stuff, what he did with Kobe Bryant and Kyle Lowry and like it's it's just cool shit, and that's what hockey needs, man. We need fun guys in there to mix it up. Don't talk about breakouts. Don't talk about two on ones. We don't give a fuck ups, right? <laughs> I sure don't. <laughs> All right, uh, Cabby, thank you. Uh, to um, Uppy, missing curfew. Enter to win. Our enter to win. www.missingcurfew.com. Put your email in. Join our mailing list. Uh, our enter to win has some great prizes, and they're only getting better as our sponsors grow. And uh, you teed me right up. Our sponsors, Uppy. You're damn right, Obes. You guys are doing, everyone's doing a great job at Hall Pass Media. Our DraftKings, thank you. Doing some cool shit for us. Good life. Making the boys look sharp. Up dog. Aura ring. Aura ring, I baby. just got my aura ring. You did? Yeah. Woohoo, baby. Woo come on. Come on, round. I can't wait to see you. Uh, I can't wait to see you use this, bud. This is a special, uh, it's a special wearable tech you gotta device. You take it off when you jerk off, or do you leave it on? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> it can slide off because I use all that coconut oil. <laughs> oh, you do like a good coconut oil. Canada dips, lip boomers. Canada gotta, dips. Tell you what, I got my door the other day. I got five more Cali rolls waiting for me. 25 tins. I'm Are chewing this stuff. Footlongs? Like. Hoot foot log. Get Who's got foot the foot log? log? I'm telling you, these fucking lip boomers, man. They're unbelievable. And Manscaped. Oh, man. Ball deodorant. I love it. Yeah. Ball you know, deodorant. It's, it's time. It's time, actually. I get hooked up with that uh, razor again. Yeah. I got to get the weed whacker, but get the nose hairs under control. Yeah, so so uh, to our sponsors, I'll be thank you, right? 100%. Thank you again. Thank you, fans. All your support matters. We love bringing you this NHL uh, lifestyle podcast so jump on our spotify apple podcast whatever your podcast uh, platform platform is leave a review chirp us you leave one star we're fucking coming yeah knocking. yeah you can chirp us but don't leave us one star come on we're, we're trying here but you can rip us that's all good fun Love give it. us like five stars for Love even it. if you don't like us right so rate and review and uh you know obi won't hit on your girlfriend so. <laughs> that was mr curfew playoff hockey baby